Hello, everybody. We're back with the next episode. Um, sorry for the delay. I know the idea, I I guess, is supposed to be it's every week, even though it's we've never really actually, like, I don't know. There really is no rhyme or reason to this. All it is is just Jason wants me to listen to something. I listen to it. I want Jason to listen to or watch something, and he listens to it or watches it. And that's what we're doing today. Um, oh, sorry, and I forgot to mention we talk about it afterwards. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, Jason, if you want to introduce your recommendation. Yep. So <clears throat> I kind of not pushed the bounds this time, but did something that requires a little bit more patience in another way. I made Will listen to an instrumental, and I thought this could go one of two ways because I remember you mentioned liking classical music. So this is pretty much... By the way, the the band is uh, Scale the Summit. They're like an instrumental prog metal band or neoclassical with a little bit of more like beautiful melodies incorporated. And the album is The Migration, all instrumental, all intricate stuff. Or with uh, But the nice thing about them is they do a lot of um, slower breaks in between, so it's not just wankery the entire time. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to say right off the bat, I didn't particularly like this the whole thing um well there were some things that i really did like um some songs or some you know parts of songs here and there or some different like some different ideas you know or here and there but overall i i don't really like it, it didn't really resonate with me um obviously compared to um the other stuff you recommended in the past mm-hmm like, on its own, obviously, I mean, there's a lot that's good about it. But um, in terms of, like, my musical tastes and, you know, compared to other things you've recommended, this actually might be on the bottom of the list. What was the, the most important thing that didn't connect with you? A lot of it, I don't, I, a lot of it was just, I don't like metal Especially, like, this kind of prog metal that's, like, written in those, like, like, I hate to say cheesy, because that's such a, like, that's such a cliche term, but, like, I hate to, no, sorry. Um, I don't like metal and, like, this kind of metal that's written in those, like, major keys and stuff like that. It just sounds so annoying to me. It just, it just feels like it's, it's such, like, forced motivation music you know what i'm saying that you see in like a like an anime video or something and like nothing against anime but oh so okay so it's just more of the feel and the emotion of the notes yeah and like those obviously i guess just the the major key thing is more of just a matter of taste because i resonate extremely more with minor keys especially in this genre um right. yeah so i just felt like I, well, okay. I'll, um, Odyssey, the first track. Um, I really liked the opening. I actually, like overall, I thought it was a good song, and I was like, "Ah, oh, Jason, he did it again. <laughs> he recommended a, you know, another one of my favorite albums." But then, then Atlas Novus, I was like, "Okay, I like this. I, I, I like that kind of. Um, how do you describe it? I liked like the, the timing of it and like the beat." And the, I love all of the cool, um, you know, like um, arpeggios he does and and all that stuff. Right. I don't really know what it's called, but I mean, it 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 sounded really cool. But then I think everything went downhill at the olive tree. I I thought the olive tree was terrible. What about it? It's pretty much just everything that I mentioned before that i didn't like about this album like it just felt like forced emotion like motivational stuff mm. that you see on instagram it really just felt like a you know like a generic anime or like a generic anime video game or like from like sonic or something like that mm. you know i think it's interesting that like, you say that <clears throat> because pretty much like i don't like this is the only band that i like in this genre um, especially being instrumental, 
but I think it's weird. Like I always like there's a lot of other like solo shred artists or other bands or like you're saying like um, opening theme credit music that sounds exactly the same. For some reason, these are the ones that these guys are the ones that stick out to me. And only particularly really in this album, because the rest of their albums are kind of derivative to each other. And that's because during this album, they had like the best group of musicians, like their bass player. I don't know if you could hear it, but their bass player is nasty. And I think on this album was he was pretty all over the place, especially on Atlas Novus. Like it's insane. The the licks that he can do. Um, Yeah, I I noticed that actually, I believe on Narrow Salient. I thought the bass was pretty good on that. Um, Um, But um Oh, so like the the band, the members changed. So apparently, I don't know the the whole story, but apparently, like the lead guitar player, the guy that writes the majority of the music, he's I, and again, this is all hearsay. Um, apparently, he's difficult to work with. So they a lot of music, like majority, almost the whole band, like quit after this album, or I'm sorry, after the next album really. that they did. So this is probably the best album that they did with the musician lineup that they had, but. For something, I don't know why that um, other people don't... Well, I, I, sh- I shouldn't say I don't know why. Um, I think it's... I don't know. Like I said, they're the ones in this genre that I actually really like. Is any other band in this genre I don't like, even with vocals. But there's something about the way that they construct their music, and especially their, the bass player is their first reason why I ever got a six-string bass because he does like chords and he uses all the strings and he's very, very talented in the way that he can actually construct melodies and lines and not just be the groove or the backbone of the song with the drummer. Um, yeah, so the Odyssey and Atlas Novus are probably the best songs for the album for me. I also like uh, the, or- oh, yeah. the Oracle was yeah. a good one too. I'm blanking on that. That's- and that's another thing, because like, I, I didn't really find any of it particularly memorable besides like odyssey and atlas novus um actually oh the dark horse i thought that was a pretty cool song yeah i love that opening um and then i love how it leads into that um you know the metal heavy stuff and then um yeah. sub subrosa i thought that was a nice um even if it was 20 seconds i liked that kind of space atmosphere like looking out into the horizon i always like that kind of stuff yeah and it's the the other thing too with instrumental music like this like it's it's really like especially like you only listen to it one time right um i think i over time like over the time you recommend i think i listened to it twice may yeah i think i listened to it twice yeah it's it's one of those ones that like it just it takes a little bit of fucking brain work to connect with it because i mean all you have is the focus on the instrumentals Mm -hmm. Because there's no vocals to catch, like the catchiness of the song or the attention that you give to it has to be with intricate or interesting sounding vocals. Or for me, with them, it's the actual sounds that they're able to do. And I mean, obviously, the shit's difficult. Like, that's just going to be, you know, what it is in this genre. Every band is going to play difficult shit. It just depends on what you like from it. But I only feel like they have that, like, kind of an, like, the only thing I will say is I don't really notice it now because it's kind of just because it's all instrumental. It just fills the background for me. I, I choose to focus on the bass and the rhythm is his solos. I agree are really like kind of cliche and just chromatically scaled and all that shit. But his actual tapping and his chord voicings are unique, which is very interesting. But yeah, his solos aren't really that interesting. Yeah, so that's the um, only thing for me with him. And, and, and you can kind of see that egotistical like shredding that he does. Only in the solos. Yes, exactly. Where I'm just like, or or because like with that, I'm like, okay, like this is clearly designed just to like make you feel good, and I know that like that's a good intention, but I'm like, it just I don't know, like, and I I know, okay, a lot of music is designed to make you feel good, but I just uh, there's something about the note selection, where I don't know, it 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 just comes across. It's it's like, okay, it's not insidious, but it's like. I don't, it just doesn't. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know. Are you talking about this album? Yes. I mean, a lot of it, like especially like the Olive Tree. I mean, a lot of the it just, it just felt like it was like a video game soundtrack. And like I know there's great video game soundtracks, but like they typically don't have like the sophistication as like of like a, like an album that is just designed to be an album on its own. Mm. You know. Like a lot, like it just, a lot of it just it felt like it was like a Sonic you know 
le- like a Sonic level or something, or, or like a, a generic anime video game that you forget in like a week. Right. What about the, the song Willow? Um, that one was, um, I, I, I like that one better, um, than like, um, I didn't really like Olive Tree. I didn't like Evergreen. I mean, that was better than those two. The Traveler, I don't even remember. It's interesting. So like, like when you say like insidious or like uncomfortable, like, is it because it's it's like to me like when i listen to it it doesn't like it's not like happy sounding it's more of like um what's the what's the word for it It like it it's like folky almost but not like mm. super like like happy i don't know a lot of it is in a minor key and especially with um with the song willow too like a lot of the stuff is in minor like i said that the tapping and the chord voicings and some of the melodies aren't happy it's just his his shredding is mainly in that sort of happy key which is very strange i don't know like i mean it works to me but like i said i don't really focus on it um too much which is i mean it's it's weird to say because there's no vocals so it's like that's what you it pierces through the mid-range of the song but i'm so captivated by the rest of the music it's just like to me the solos are just background filler i, I can't explain it it's actually not that bad of a way of looking at it yeah because it yeah because it's mean, not I'm, meant to be the I'm, focal yeah, like, point of the song yeah but i think a lot of it it just it kind of it, it tries to just insist to you that it is which is why i didn't really like uh, like the the songs i mentioned yeah i don't like i didn't feel i didn't feel motivated i didn't feel like a lot of it, I just I felt confused. I was just like, and not in a good way. Not like a, ooh, I wonder what this is. I was just like, Ugh. what do you mean confused? Like that? I don't know. Cause I was just like, what is this going for? Like, what's the tone it's going for? What's the? I don't know how you how you'd say it. Like, what's the? I don't know. Yeah. Like, what's the tone? What what style is this? Like, what? Do you feel the way it, about jazz too? Um, no. I mean, like not like 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 you know, like complex chords, like free notes, you know, kind of jazz, <laughs> not like standard like, jazz. Not like a like a relaxing like a hi hat like a do, 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 like that's yeah, not like, like that are, kind. Um, like polyrhythm jazz because polyrhythm jazz and this kind of genre are, are hand in hand, even though progressive metal, depending on who does it. It can be a little bit more dissonant or a little bit more weirdly choice with the chords and the voicings, but um, it's just like a blend of different styles. And like I said, the one thing that I think he does well or they do well as a band together is the melodies and the chords and the, the actual structure of the song. Especially like for me, like I, I really focus on the bass and these ones. Like if you listen to the bass melodies, it's fucking insane. And that's why I think like, you know, I've, I've listened to this album, you know, over the course of seven or eight years so every time i listen to it i always pick up like different nuances that you don't hear because there's so much intricate shit going on you have to like pick one to focus on so like there's times to listen to it i'll focus on the specific guitar uh, arpeggio that he's sweeping and then the bass is doing some like chord tapping in the background like there's a bunch of shit like that okay yeah um like i said the the bass i even noticed i was like there's something something going on here he is such a nasty um, bass player yeah um but to answer what you said about the the jazz thing i don't know like that not necessarily obviously i don't like that kind of like polyrhythm jazz as much as i like that smooth um like cocktail kind of jazz i, I don't know there's like a there's a billion genres and subgenres of jazz just like there's a billion subgenres of metal um I don't know. It's 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 hard to explain. I just yeah. I guess I just don't, I can't really put it into words. Why? Well, just was curious because you said like the insidious choice of the notes, or it made you uncomfortable just because you didn't know where it was going. So that's what I was what I was, what I was getting at was just the free form of it, kind of like that kind of jazz. I don't know, but like with the jazz, like I, I can still tell that there's like a a through line. It, it's it's not just like. Um, and I know that is why a lot of people that don't like jazz, um, 
don't like it. Yeah, it's just because like the notes don't necessarily make sense. Like they like literally like you know you know the joke is that there's no wrong note in jazz. Yeah, you know, and because if if you use every note, then none of the notes like there's no you know because you like you need to scale and you need chords and everything because then it puts everything in order and then you can select from that and if you choose something if you use everything then you're choosing nothing but i don't i don't think they're choosing everything um no and i'm and this is where like because i don't really know music theory like that but i i i do right. most things by ear so i i mean a lot of it comes down to the timbre and the actual tone and the effect too that all can change depending on what you're doing but there's a lot of notes that like kind of work maybe but like there, there's notes that are just playing off and they don't work together no matter how many ways you can arrange it and there's some that like kind of work and gojira does that a lot with their music they have notes like chords together that kind of work but then when you try to play them it's a lot more dissonant than what you hear in the studio because they're able to fine tune it or have some effect on it to kind of underlay and hide some of those okay. like not like mistakes but it like I said, like it, it makes the note more palatable to where it sounds like it works within the context of what you're doing. So I think that's like kind of the same thing with that type of jazz. Like they're not technically playing like just every note or random wrong notes. Like they're they're picking voicings that sound kind mm-hmm. of cool and dissonant and sort of work within the context of the song. Yeah, that that's a good way to describe it. Um, also, I I think another reason why that jazz that like polyrhythm jazz doesn't have the same you know thing that i had with with this album with like i was like oh what um is i mean i'm from new orleans i grew up listening to this music all the time like my dad loves that kind of music he puts it on when we're in the car a lot you know yeah um so i'm just i'm just accustomed to hearing it um whereas i can see like someone who's like you know like they're 40 never heard it before they'd be like oh what (laughs) i find it very interesting i I can see that i find it very interesting that someone that's not really accustomed to this genre you gravitate towards the more like evil minor sad key sounding shit than like the the stuff that people that you know just getting into metal are more palatable to like i said like dream theater or the prog that you know is is more standard in terms of what the the scales and keys they've heard before in other popular music just with distortion and intricate playing so i think it's funny that you so, gravitate towards like the actual sub genre <laughs> of metal than the more popular one which is funny Wait, so is this like is so this is like normal for this genre or this is the not normal? Like this is the palatable for stuff in, in the genre? I think this genre is all palatable. I think pe- like like I said, the one thing I think people would get listening to this is just they're just bored, right? Because there's no hook, there's no like catch. Like it's all I wasn't const- um yeah okay i mean i wasn't bored yeah i mean for some <laughs> for some of the songs i was yes yeah, so like that's like really the only thing with the genre but it is more palatable than other like like gojira like i feel like if someone that doesn't listen to metal can listen to the skill of summit album and like at most be bored but they listen to like a heavy gojira song they'll just be like turned off because it's too aggressive you know what i mean well i mean it's palatable to me no, that's why that's why i find interesting is your opposite in terms of this like you're just diving into that kind of shit but then the palatable stuff you're like oh this is making me confused <laughs> yeah i guess i that's a good point i don't know because i mean just with that kind of metal with those me- like the minor keys and just the evil um kind of just ominous sound it's just i, I don't know it, it just draws my attention and just demands more of my attention um Wait, did I say attention twice? Yeah. Okay, I'm stupid. <laughs> um, I just yeah, because it it draws my attention, and it just it demands my, like my respect almost. Yeah. Like there's just this absolute, um, omnipotence about it. You know. You know, I mean, that's the the mystifying element to feeling sad or angry or lustful or that raw emotion that you get with those types of scales and those types of notes and that are this overall feeling in general like that's what gravitates me towards in the first place i never really liked stuff like this because like i said i thought all of it was just a copy of one another and it just sounded wanky but for some reason these guys are the ones that i actually like listening to but i don't like find myself listening to it that often and that's i think it's just because i've just been listening to it for so long and i have to be in a specific mood for it but out of all the stuff that I do listen to, it's definitely the the hardest and the only songs I can kind of play are on bass. Like the guitar shit is just way too difficult to even try. Like the 
the, yeah. the intro tapping riff on Atlas Novus is fucking insane. He's doing like really fast shit on both hands. <laughs> yeah, though no, that that was beautiful. I love that oh, that Atlas Novus riff. That was awesome. That's probably the best song they've ever written. I think it's their most popular song. Yeah, that song. Odyssey, like the opening and then like the last minute, I thought were fantastic. Yeah, Atlas Novus was beautiful. The Dark Horse was pretty cool. I liked Sabrosa. And then that's really it. Like a lot of it, I just, I don't even like remember. Like I said, like I just, and that's, that's another thing. Like if, if I don't remember, then like, I mean, it's proof to me that like it, it, it wasn't really calling my attention. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there there was something I wasn't seeing that's happened to me before. I'm willing to admit that I'm I could be wrong, but from what I've absorbed now, that's not what I got. Well, yeah. I mean, if you just don't resonate with it, you don't resonate with it. But like I said, it is difficult to you know get all that you need to get out of this type of music because there's just so much intricate shit going on. And the other thing too, it's it's. I hate bringing this up every single time, but, you know, like, when you when you do play it, it's just, like, you... Some of it gets lost in the mix. So, like, when you actually, like, take the time to play the actual scale yourself or play the melody yourself, you hear, like, the melody in its truest form with no other things distracting you. And then once you listen to the song again, like, that melody pokes at you a lot harder. So, like, there's always, like, little sounds and melodies that, like, stick in my head and I go and play them. And then when I listen to the song again, it just like pokes out at me beautifully. So that's, that, mm-hmm. I, I think that's the other problem with this drama. Why not, not that much more people can get into it is because it's a very <laughs> guitar player genre. So it's like, it's, it's people like me and others who actually play and, you know, want to learn how to do this shit or like can actually understand the techniques that they're doing. It's like, it's like showing off for other dudes kind of thing. <laughs> not really like a, oh, oh, get it's, into it's like going gym. to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, so, just showing off for other dudes. Yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of the biggest problem with this genre. But um, this genre meaning prog metal. Yeah, this type of like shreddy prog metal. I see. Because um, Dream Theater is yeah. another band that's like this, and I I can't stand Dream Theater, and that's mainly because their vocalist sucks dick. Hey, I've never listened to. Oh, them. dude, they're off. So I wouldn't know. It's it sucks because the music is really good, but the singer is just terrible, and he's been terrible forever. Dude, maybe you could recommend one of those, and we could just. I'm not gonna make you sit it. through a Dream Theater album. <laughs> or right, you've heard of Dragon Force, right? <laughs> That's like yes, the cheesy that. version of uh, Dream Theater. Yeah, I I don't remember where, but I just heard they're like a really cringe British metal band, and that's like all you need to know. I'm not sure if they're British, but they are pretty cringy. Oh, they're I'm they're British. I'm pretty sure. Of course. I mean. I only know the one song that was in, like, Guitar Hero. Yeah. Which is actually... I kind of like that song. Yeah, everybody... Ri- I mean, <clears throat> everybody ripped on it because... I, I can't remember if this is true or not. It might have been true at the time. But the rumor was that they did... They recorded everything in halftime and then sped it up in the studio. That's why it kind of sounds fake. I, I mean, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. It's just It's just nostalgic for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I like the album but cover yeah, a lot for this one too. That was kind of cool. I was like, "Wait, is that like a is that like a dinosaur?" Yeah, it's like what a tree <laughs> animal hybrid thing. Yeah, like brontosaurus. Uh, oh, I just noticed that there's like a bunch of them. Yeah, in the foreground. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they, that's now, the coolest album cover too. Was there like a theme for this album or or what? I mean, since it's instrumental, like, if I were to... I mean, the album's called The Migration, and they had a bunch of, like, tree themes. So, I assume it's different types of trees, you know, taking a musical journey somewhere, I guess, is what you could loosely say. I don't know if the, yeah, if mean, the that, band actually put a concept together. I'm not sure. Not alone. I mean, that actually kind of just makes me think of it better. Yeah, I mean, music is context, like I always say. So, like, if you imagine, like, a willow moving to the song or the olive tree, because olive trees mm. are usually light and they have, like, a spiritual happy connotation to them. Like, you know, those little bullshit figurines you can get at every religious uh, museum gift shop. 
A bonsai tree. <laughs> Not, they didn't do bonsai. They should have. <laughs> No, I'm just. Um, you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, Those little like the all how like the the olive tree is a really big symbol in Christianity. Yeah, and you can get the little one. Yeah, or just like or I said, the figures. I I, I've never got one, but yeah. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? I think so. Let me look up a picture. It's like it's like there's there's um olive tree the the Jesus Christ. The grain is like very light. It's like very dark lines, very light lines. It's very textured and wavy. Christian olive tree. So like, there's always the the like the nativity scene. Like that's a big one that you can get as olive tree um, figures. Oh, yeah. Cause, oh, yeah. It's in the the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So I always think of like in that kind of context. Oh, it's a it's pretty. I don't know like whole lot about trees but i i know a, a fair deal from just you know having to memorize what wood does what and what the trees look like and what the grain looks like from doing guitar shit so that's another side of it too yeah. mm. if you want to be super yeah but i mean <laughs> <laughs> that alone i mean that actually i mean that bumps it up i because like i i love having that um i'm not saying like oh there has to like be a meaning there but i i just i like you know, well, if you're confused about what they're going for, it might help. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it helps a little bit. But even so, even in like the music itself, even with that idea in there of like, oh, this is about, you know, like the migration and like the cycles of trees and leaves and how they change over the seasons and time passing. Like even so, like the music might not even necessarily reflect that, you know? Yeah. Whereas like when I could think of something... And then I actually feel that it's like reflected in the actual artwork. It makes it instantly better, you know, mm-hmm. like how, how I can derive all of that meaning from Amores Peros, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I hate like good albums and they have a lazy album cover or just one that doesn't reflect the music at all. Um, yeah. I or like a, a movie that has like a terrible title. Yeah. You know, I mean, like that stuff matters because like a lot of the, they're probably like, Eh, it doesn't matter. It's like, yes, it does. <laughs> it's like whiskey. So it's like on its own, people that drink whiskey, I mean, unless like people pretend to be super into it because they're American or Irish or whatever the fuck, but like it really doesn't taste all that different between each other. You get people like are whiskey aficionados like, oh, this has a hint of oak with a little bit of caramel. Like shut the fuck up, right? But when you just sit at home and drink a bottle, you don't really get that shit. But, you know, if you go to the, the rustic little... uh the little industrial whiskey place and they're not a bar yet because of abc so you can only get like two or three drinks and they tell you about all the the fucking steps that I went into taking it and they pair it with like a little bit of food or like they tell you to drop a little bit of water here and there it's like it automatically is going to taste better yeah like shit like i mean that. there's probably some there's yeah there's probably some science like psychological aspect to why it's how um, you market shit man it's you're creating and you're creating a fucking sense of value that has not been present before you make it up whatever so people you're lying well not well yeah i mean it depends on how <laughs> no, 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 it, it depends on how <laughs> far you go but i mean I you like, can wow so you're breaking one of the ten commandments right there well yeah i mean most of it are buzzwords and they they do like loopholes <laughs> a straight up lie i'm talking about it's the way you present like you're not lying it's yeah. just you present it in a way that one person might care about versus another person might not give a shit so it's like you're creating value depending on what the person values that's what i'm saying but yeah a lot of it is I straight see. up lying pretty much yeah breaking the ten commandments man it's fun to do yeah, I'm just imagining how many people are there uh, are out there that have broken every single one of the Ten Commandments. I'm sure there's like people that like that's like a checklist. <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, it's honestly not that hard. Yeah, let's pull up. So, I mean, <laughs> pull up the Ten Commandments. All right, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have false gods before me. I mean, everyone has literally done that. Yeah. Um, everyone has done that, and then wait, I forget the order that they're in. Let me see. Man, I'm literally doing the best I can to be a traditional Western Christian, and I don't even remember all of the Ten Commandments off the top of my head. I feel like this is the majority of the country. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, even though the majority of the country is not trying to be a traditional Western Christian. Um, thou shall not make... Wait, let me see. Okay. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have other uh, false gods before me. 
Um, wait, you shall not make idols. Isn't that like the same thing as the first one? Wait, 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 wait. I guess it's the same. There's the thing with like worshiping and idolism. So. Oh yeah. Okay. You shall. Okay. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. We do that every day. Here's the it thing, though. I've always sad. like. It's like there's a difference. Like, for, to me, I mean, this is what most people say, and I agree, as opposed to just like cussing with you know Jesus or God in it. But it's just like forsaking him. So it's like taking your name in vain, meaning that you're blatantly disrespecting and you're blatantly lying under God's name. But it, yeah, but even if you're using it in like a supposed like innocent context, like you're still belittling God. How's that? And that's why though? it's it. Well, because when you like, when, like you know, when you're, when you're, um, you know, looking at memes and you go, "Oh, Jesus Christ!" Like that completely belittles Jesus because, like, you're just. It's so taking, vague, though. How does that belittle him? Because you're taking the name of our Lord and Savior, and you're just saying it like it's as if it's just like any, like it's just some like, you know, like it's like it's a piece of trash. Like it can just be thrown. It can just be thrown out. You know. I always thought that "God damn" was like a powerful, like "God damn this thing." Um. Because I don't think that's... Maybe there's some... I think it's the opposite of belittling. Maybe there's some... Um, well, yeah, that's um, probably zeal. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, okay. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. No one gives a fuck. Um, <laughs> I do that, but not everyone does that. Honor your mother and father. I do that. A lot of people don't do that. Um, do they mean honor, like ki- like, respect, or, like, just have a sense of honor about them. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I mean, why are those two different from one another? Because there's a difference between respecting somebody and you actually felt like they're honorable or you're actually like honoring them. Well, it's like at the end of the day, like your parents did give birth to you. So like that you, you do owe them a certain amount of respect. Um, I'm so, but it's also like it, it it just it's about the importance of family and how like you know you it you need to have like a mother and a father and you need to listen to them because they know what's best for you and you bring that on to like you pass that on to your kids i see essentially because like the the people who your parents were and what they taught you that's what you're going to be like there's no way around it like there's like even even if like you know like some kid is is like being rebellious or whatever for a little while he's being just like his dad because his dad probably did the same thing but then over time like he realized like oh no like i i need to actually you know do what my parents taught me and i need to you know continue the christian tradition and stuff like that it it, 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 it's that idea essentially um you shall not kill Ooh. That's a big one. That's a that's a big breaky. <laughs> I think that one is like the biggest like like literally anyone in the world is like, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's a keeper. We don't have to do an addendum for that one. Right. I'll show um, that kill. Well, right. I mean, I think they're all important, but if for someone who's like not Christian, I can see how they're like, yeah, they kind of have a point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's if you just live your life with a general sense of respect <laughs> and dignity, like you don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, um, you shall not commit adultery. That's a big hot topic for um, this fucking day and age. I'll tell you, Jesus. Oh yeah, and that's really sad. You shall not steal. See, that one's really vague, right? So it's like I've, I've done that multiple times. <laughs> I can't remember. Like they don't see him as equal, right? There's obviously worse, like, can it, or is it the point that repentance is available to all the commandments that have been broken? Oh, I mean, no, I mean, if you break the Ten Commandments, I mean, you can still repent. And, like, if you really, truly are sorry, God will, you know, he will forgive you. Um, And obviously, you know, like, if you stole from somebody, you know, you should give it back to them or you should make amends with them in, like, in some way, you know. Hmm. Um, but I mean, so the commandments, obviously they have not been rewritten, but like a a lot of them, you know, because, you know, like they, a lot of them are really vague. 
you know, but, you know, like, you, like, you shall not kill. Whereas, I mean, like, it hasn't been, like, edited, but it's been put in, like, a different way that we can understand it. You know, like, you shall not murder, like, innocent people, essentially. Because, obviously, killing in the, like, in the situation of self-defense is justified. Because if that there is no other option, like, if your wife and children are getting, like, beaten to death and you do nothing, like, I'm pretty sure the teaching is that's wrong. Like, you, you need to intervene. And obviously, like, you need to do everything in your power so that they don't die. But if they do die as a result of you protecting the ones you love, then that is fine. I think the fact that you can just repent for any of them, like, who gives a shit? And, like, what's the reason for them to even be there just to scare you? Well, well you're not, you're missing the point, though. Because, like, you actually have to, like, be sorry. And you, and you also have to, like, have the intention of never doing it again. And because, like, if you just go, like, oh, forgive me then like you're gonna keep doing it and then yeah <laughs> it makes me laugh i'm just thinking of like a dude that like blows up a fucking train or a bus and he tries really hard to be like actually sorry about it <laughs> it's just so he can be fine because he's about to be put to death and he's like really like meditating like i really need to feel remorseful about this <laughs> right that uh, sounds like some family guy thing or whatever I like the the one where they're trying to get Osama, and he's like, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior before they shoot him, and he goes into heaven. He's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, How the fuck do we get on this well, topic? I, um, I don't know. Yeah, really. How did we do that? I don't fucking know. Oh, we're talking about olive um, trees. That's what it was. Ah, and that was, you know, yeah, you said it was an important Christ, uh, Christian symbol. I can't remember it's why it's significant. Um, I mean, I just saw it. It's, it's in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm. I, I still um, remember why it's important. <laughs> the Garden of Gethsemane is where um, Jesus, like, you know, the agony in the garden. Okay. So, I, like, right before he went to Jerusalem to die, essentially. Yeah. Um, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So lying. We do that all the time. Yeah. Um, that, and then you shall not covet your neighbor's. Oh, this one just says you shall not covet, but then other versions I've seen it, you know, like you shall not covet your neighbor's goods or you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so like, don't, don't be jealous essentially cover your neighbor's wife <laughs> sorry the girl next door god she's just fucking irresistible <laughs> it's an american yeah, tradition like, you wouldn't understand you're like bro can you blame me <laughs> like come on <laughs> this is the early 2000s this is miniskirt season bro come on yeah true fuck or like god you literally had me be born in brazil so <laughs> It's all fake. It's carna- They're false it's idols. Carnival also. also, yeah. But um, what um, commandment sticks out to you in particular for any reason? I guess I don't know. I mean, none of them really stick out to me. I, not the commandments, but there's just a bunch of like Old Testament Abrahamic laws that you like. You know, not being able to wear polyester, eat shellfish, or if you're woman's menstruating you have to do some weird shit to her or something like that i don't know oh yeah i mean we don't have to do that anymore no i know but that's that's what sticks out to me is like the like and there's people go back and forth because they um i don't know how they justify the the um the whole gay thing because they got but they're like oh it's not part of the abrahamic law like i don't know it's it's all fucking mental hoop well the gay thing is very much part of the abrahamic law (laughs) <laughs> right, so that's what I'm saying. If those were abolished and no one follows the other ones, like the shellfish one or the polyester one or the other weird shit, like why did they pick that hill to die on? That's that's what I don't get. I mean, because that one, it's like, I mean, it's like killing people. It's like, it's just, it's kind of like a given of, you know, like. What, what do you mean it's killing? You know? What do you mean killing people? Where it's, I mean, because it, 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 it's, it's like killing was part of those same laws, but it's like that was kept because it just, you know, it's like intrinsically bad. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I like the order that they're in. 
I think it like nicely, like it it starts out with God, and then it ends with like um. Yeah, like um. How do you say like? Never mind, I lost what I was going to say. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Damn it. That was like the worst face plant ever. I always love when people get derailed mid-sentence because it happens to me all the fucking time. But, um... Damn it. Was, wasn't there one that was, like, if your... If your, like, daughter or wife gets raped or some shit, you have to, like, do something insane? Some... Um... Well, what specifically i can't remember where it's like you have to like rape their daughter or something like that it's probably not that but it's something like no i don't think it's you know i just i just think it's i just think it's like the rapist has to raise the kid with the daughter yeah it's something i think that's what it is i'm i'm not i'm not entirely sure something wild like that but the yeah i i said polyester but i don't think they knew about polyester back then but like what, what was the fabric that you're not allowed to wear I don't remember. I know. I know what you're talking about, but I forgot which yeah. one specifically it was. The shellfish one is really funny. I don't know why. <laughs> like, like, bro, like you either gotta catch your shit running or swimming. Like, why would you limit it? <laughs> food's I mean, food's really f- important. There's other fish. Well, I mean, a lot of it was like because God just really wanted to, you know, he he really wanted his people to like be faithful and believe in him and. Have them bring godliness into the world. So he just picks shellfish just to prove their loyalty. <laughs> I mean, I don't ne- know necessarily the reason why it was shellfish. I mean, there's probably a reason. No, it but, could have um, been anything. You know, I just think it's funny. Right, right, right. Um, but um, it's like um, what, what was I gonna say? Damn, I lost my train of thought again. You're on a roll, man. No, I mean it's it's like when. God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. It's like, that's kind of fucked up, but it's like, and I, as you know, like in, in the story, God eventually, like, right as Abraham's going to sacrifice him, God's like, no, you don't need to do it. Like, like he was literally just trying to prove Abraham's uh, loyalty to God, to him, like to, to God. <laughs> he's like, which is kind of messed up, but it's God. Like, so you, you have to listen to you him. You fucking zealot. I was just joking. What are you crazy? <laughs> Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, if if this man is literally going to be the founder of the Jewish religion, and like literally bring godliness into the world and ultimately salvation, I need to make sure he's like legit. So, <laughs> this is preparing you for when you'll one day run the media and have sex with little boys. <laughs> oh, the Jews! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. That's a Jewish stereotype. Oh yeah, dude. The the anti-Semitic um, dude. It, I don't know how much you know. Oh, I I guess. Do um, you know like how far and how deep that shit goes? I can imagine quite far. It goes as far as that. Like all the Jewish elites are like alien lizards. They're like reptilian people. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's like that. That's not on a that. I mean, I guess it's it's the same kind of joke. Like all these like rich fucking elites are not human they're just sucking the life force of the entire planet like getting as much money and gold as they can hoard like but that's kind of been like the the rothschilds and the uh the not builders and all those other people that have been accused of financing every side of every major war and all that shit and obviously the the most common one is the all the lawyers and hollywood executives are all jewish all that shit right yeah my grandpa was a uh was a jewish lawyer i mean he's still alive but <laughs> color me shocked but dude it's crazy because kanye got i mean you know the shit that he got into with all that <laughs> no i don't think i do he's one i i and i don't know if this is him exclusively but like, there's a big push that like the original tribes of israel were black and so there's this like really weird subculture of like black israelites and i don't know quite what they believe but i think they like but that they were like god's chosen people and white people were made by an evil scientist or some shit like it's it's wild (laughs) the the there's a lot of black like it's funny there's a lot of black and white conspiracy theories that are super extreme on every opposite level 
but the the Jewish one goes back really fucking far. Um, I mean, yeah, like the the pilgrims and like American Protestants literally thought that like if you're black, that was like a curse. <laughs> Just stupid fucking shit. But um, I mean, there are black there are black Jews like in um in Ethiopia. Well, not that they're not and, black um, Jews. What I'm saying is like the original like like the Jewish people were like African, like the original twelve well, tribes. I mean, the original everybody was African because human beings do come from Africa. Yeah. So I mean, you I mean honestly like I guess you can make that case, but um, you know as you explained to me how there was only three races. Um, which, you know, obviously the names of those we cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> which is a shame because oh. they're fucking hilarious. I know. When you told me that, I was like, ah. And it's just okay. semantical. Like, that's what's so fucking stupid. Like, you obviously don't mean it as a disrespect. It just sounds like a slur. It sounds funny. But, like, whatever word you change it to, it still has the same fucking meaning, which is why I hate this logistical fucking... I hate when people get so riled up over what the word says, opposed to your intention. But anyway, but yeah, it, it's not that like there were Jews that were black or like because most people were black thousands and thousands of years ago. I'm saying like they believe a very specific sect of Judaism that's like black power inspired. And it's been a while since I've listened to a lot of the shit, but from what I understand, like there was an original scientist that was trying to do some experiment and then he like accidentally created white people and they were like pretty much just inferior in iq and also just like like they were doomed to be devils and they were doomed to do wicked things kind of shit and he underestimated how powerful they became and then that's why there's white people in the world today so it's like it's like shit like that and then the thing that kanye got in trouble for was he was again talking about like the Mel Gibson thing, how Jews have way too much power and influence in our government and our media, and like every you know all his you know clothes and shoe um, contracts pulled out, and like banks threatened to fucking like close all of his accounts and shit, like put a really big stronghold on his entire life for making these kind of statements, and 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 this is I mean it kind of proves his point to be honest with me or to be honest with you. Not saying that you need you know, to go fucking shoot up a synagogue or, like, you know, look down on your Jewish friends. But, I mean, it is objectively a fact that there is a lot of Jewish influence in our government and in our media. And if that's intrinsically a bad thing or a good thing, I have no idea. But, like I said, if they have that much power to, like, if you just say something. And I think there's a difference between, like, criticize, like criticism or just being, like, straight up anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. So, Oh, I mean, I mean, the, like, literally capitalism... Like that kind of in the in the way we understand it, a lot of that was influenced by Judaism. Well, not like the religion, but like the people. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter what you are. It's just the fact that, like, you know, when you have a culture of religion or group of people, they're gonna look out for their own, and they're gonna like help their other like their friends and their family like move up in that circle. And when, once you network and you have those connections, it's very difficult for outsiders to come in. So that that also is just a product of how it's gonna happen now because it's already a thing so it's not like it's some major conspiracy that they're just elite (laughs) aliens that are ruining the planet for their own benefit but i think they're bad people in general i don't believe that regardless if they're jewish or christian or atheist i just think all the people on that level are bad so i think that's kind of the point is like criticizing everybody yeah criticizing the elites on that level but not focusing on the fact that they're jewish but understanding that there are a lot of jewish people that are in that circle you know what i mean you're just saying like they happen to be Jewish. Well, it's not that they happen to be Jewish. Like it's like, like like you go into like a regular, or it's like you have like Jewish friends, right? Like they may become lawyers, but like they don't really have like influence and power because they're not like you know lawyers for celebrities or government officials. They're you know like trying to get a company out of doing something illegal. It's hard, you know what I mean? Like they're not everybody is that powerful on that level. So that's what I'm saying. Like my grandpa. Exactly. Like your grandpa is not fucking having some conspiracy to like hoard all the money and like funnel out drugs to kill people and make them, you know what I mean? Like that's what I'm saying. Oh, but like my, my grandpa, like he, like he gets this, like, I don't know if it's like a penchant or it's like something where like he gets like, he just like receives money like every month and like a check. And like he never spends any of it, and like I'm pretty sure there's like a there's like a, a rule where like if you don't spend, like if you let it build up this much and you don't spend any of it, like they'll take it. So then like, oh my dad and my uncles are like, uh, hello. 
Yeah, the government does really weird shit. I, I don't, pensions are going away. My I, my dad still has one because he worked for the government, but I, I don't really know how they work. Yeah, I mean, that, that whole thing, I really don't understand how that works, but it's fine. Yeah, my overall point is just like, when these the reason why these types of ideas are dangerous for regular people is because they don't understand the difference between someone that's Jewish, that's a regular like person, as opposed to somebody that works in Hollywood or works for a government or for some major corporation. Like there's a massive fucking difference, and as opposed to just like hating an entire group of people, it's the same. It's also the same concept of most people now are starting to realize, especially on the left. Um, that like criticism of Israel or criticism of Zionism is also not like an attack on the Jewish people. It's an attack on their government. It's, I still am of the opinion that if you are against Zionism, you are being anti-Semitic. It's not being against it. It's just being criticized. Like it's it gives them a blanket to do whatever they can fucking do. So like obviously the the shit with Palestine is really difficult and. It's been going on for that reason. It's been fought over for thousands and thousands of years. But any time that, like, they, what I'm saying is, like, they're in the position where they're not going to be criticized heavily for whatever they do. Like, if they decide to do insane war crimes or any shit that the government decides to implement, like, not the people, obviously, right? But then it just well, yes, I I understand that. But I'm my whole thing with that entire conflict between Israel and Palestine is I'm like. Yes, you can criticize the Israeli government for a bunch of things they've done. Like, yes, I even do that. But if you're going to do that, first, you need to criticize the governments of all of these Muslim countries. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody deserves criticism. But it's the fact that, like, if you do that, like, it, it's a very touchy subject because you're if you if you're not very specific in what you're saying, like, you're just going to be labeled as anti-Semitic. Like, that's my it's not saying that it's not choosing a side. It's holding everybody accountable. And even with our own government, like our hand is in every fucking pie on the world. So it's like nobody's like, free from of criticism. Those... And that's how it should be. Yeah, but like a lot of those people are being anti-Semitic because they literally have no idea what they're talking about. And they literally, it's just like, oh, Jews, bad. They have a settlement in a country with like brown people. Oh, that's like terrible, you know? Like, and then they just, they it, they just buy into the whole like, like, like Israel is evil. Like white people are evil, which is, it's nonsense that, that people think that Jews are white people. Like that's utterly insane. But that's what my point is. Like they can't distinguish criticism between dogmatic hatred for like a whole group of people that's my entire point and that's why the shit with kanye is so infuriating because like objectively he does have a point but people are not going to perceive it that way they're just going to like get fuel that dogmatic hatred towards jews when it shouldn't be that way it should be you're supposed to criticize what needs to be criticized and move on very like i said you should be very specific with it but most people can't distinguish thing? that that whole thing you explained with like him with like the conspiracy theory with the black jews <laughs> that is like the something that can only exist in america <laughs> this is such like a i don't know where it like, started obviously it's popularized here and most people like the black people that either converted to islam or converted to that sect of the black israelites a lot of them were like americans that decided to go over there and preach the good word or whatever the fuck um but I don't know. I mean, it's like when you go to New York and those fucking weirdos are screaming at you in the subway. Like, it's shit like that. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't I don't think anybody's free from criticism. So there's stuff to criticize the Israeli government for. There's stuff to criticize the Palestinian government for. Like I said, they've been fighting over that shit for thousands of years. It's just not something that's just as simple as one bad, one good type of thing. And especially over time, Absolutely, like, yeah. with people dying and families wanting revenge, like it's just gotten to the point where it's just people against people. Well, right. And that's why like my, my ultimate stance on the whole Israel Palestine thing is I'm just like, I am pro Israel in the sense that I believe that the Jewish people need to have like their own state and be a free country, essentially. Yeah. I mean, that's all really, I believe. I mean, no, do I believe that they should be, you know, killing people? Do I believe that should, they should be taking away people's home? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. But I, su I, I just, I support a modern, like, Jewish state. Yeah. I think, essentially. I think to me, because, like, it's, it, it's kind of the same thing that we went through with 9 11, right? It's like you had, like, a Muslim extreme terrorist that did a horrible atrocity. And, like, we've had a couple of them, you know, throughout the years, at least in my lifetime, like, in other countries. And, 
you know, in the world. And Muslims experienced like 10 times more racism and had to be more on their toes, especially like through airport security and shit, because it's like a not an overcorrection. People are just paranoid that was going to happen, but they didn't understand like, you know, like Sikhs were being thrown into that Muslim thing and they're not even fucking Muslim. You know what I mean? Like it's, a, it's that kind of shit that it's like once bad stuff happens, it gets to the point where people don't think clearly and they're just act out of fear. And it's the same thing that happens with like the New Zealand shooting. So it's, you know, the guy goes into a mosque and fucking sprays like, you know, over 50 people easily. And it's just shit keeps happening over and over again. It's the same thing with Israel. So it's like if there's been, you know, bombings in Israel, then they're going to, you know, kill civilians because they're you know having a dispute on the border or do like throw rockets and shit like that, you know. Yes, but Islam is still bad. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, is like it's it's ordinary people versus institutions. So like the people that practice these religions, like it's they're the people that own grocery stores have no fucking like input in you know geopolitics. Oh right, I mean that's my that's one of the big arguments. I mean especially like when I was talking to you about it, that's one of my biggest arguments for, you know, Christianity being true because it's like this like nothing that alleged like people who are allegedly Christian do can undo Jesus dying on the cross because if Jesus died on the cross, Christianity is true. And like it doesn't matter what the people who claim to follow the religion do because nothing can undo what Jesus did. Right. I mean, I'm not making the argument to just saying who the chosen people are. I'm just saying like other religions coexisting with themselves peacefully and not like killing each other. You have to understand the the difference between criticism and just straight up hatred is what my point is. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't, yeah. then like it won't matter who the true people are. Like in the afterlife, God will choose. Right. But like if Muslims and Christians are going to they stop fucking killing each other and blowing each other up, then what? You know what I mean? Like that's. That's more important to the rest of the planet <laughs> that we're living on oh, right I mean, now. They'd stop if there wasn't Islam. So, <laughs> but it's not. That's my point. Like, it's gotten to the point where like they everybody hates each other on both sides. So like more extreme killings and bombings are just gonna keep happening no matter who it is. That's what I'm saying. Muslims will continue to shoot up and bomb fucking shit. White supremacists will go and shoot up Muslim shit. Like it's it's just the same shit over and over again with different people. Because it's gotten to the point where we don't under we don't know no one knows how to critically think. The people that commit this shit are just blind zealots to whatever their cause is, and they believe that the other side is bad and their side is good. They can't objectively think. Yeah. But Islam is still false. It, but I'm not making a point that Islam is a false religion. What I'm saying is I like know, the Muslim I, I'm, dude I'm that just... is giving you your fucking kebab it does not like he's not has no part in politics or no part in like spreading. You know what I mean? Like it it doesn't matter right, if no, he's a Muslim I, I or not. I was just being pa- I was just being passive. <laughs> no, I know you're but, being passive, but it's not the point that I'm making. <laughs> oh right, it doesn't um, matter if that guy's Muslim or not. Like it, he doesn't matter in the scheme of like. Um, in the scheme of this, like conflicts or like you know what I mean like it, it's it, it's it's like me like I'm totally removed from all that shit it doesn't matter if I'm Muslim Christian Jewish whatever I have no say or power in that part of the world so it doesn't matter yeah. what I do because I'm not going to go and kill somebody so it's like it doesn't make a difference what I am because I can look like I can right. objectively think but... and criticize shit and also just not blindly hate a group of people for no fucking reason well, I mean, a lot of people say the same thing. I'm not saying you say, like, you believe this, but a lot of people say the same thing you are saying, but, you know, that obviously, like, they hate Christians. Like, they hate traditional Western conservative white Christian people. And it's like, why? Like, if you claim that every, like, you tolerate everything, then why do you not tolerate that? Yeah, that, that's, again, that's the entire antithesis of my point. That's like, I like, he's like the same thing. Like, I don't fucking blindly hate Christians. Like, I think there's things that they need to be criticized for and then move on. Like, we don't, like, there's no need to just do that shit. And, like, the people that claim to be tolerant, but they're actually, like, most people that are liberals claim to be tolerant, but they're actually insufferable and intolerant to everything around them. So, I don't. I mean, yeah, it's like every young person who, like, says that they, like, hate religion or anti-religious. Like, they're all religious zealots, you know? That's what that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, it doesn't matter what you are or what you follow. If you don't follow anything, like, you have to just objectively criticize and have critical thinking as opposed to just blindly hating something if you don't have the the understanding of what is actually going on. 
because like i don't even have the full picture and it's just like i hate it when this particular group of people does this but you know i don't have the full fucking picture that's why i don't get into it because i've i like i you know fourth wall break have no fucking clue what's actually happening you're just seeing the shit that happens in the news maybe you experience something firsthand a couple times but like in actuality it has no bearing on your life I know, and that's why I hate how, like, we're just so overexposed to everything. And, like, we think we, like, live so, like, Vicariously broadly and, like, yeah. right, and, like, we know everything, but it's, like, no, we know significantly less than Isaac Newton knew. Like, Isaac Newton knew more, like, Aristotle knew more than, like, any of us could have ever imagined. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a, that was a nice little tidbit. <laughs> Aristotle. Um. Did he fuck little boys? What what was the philosopher that fucked little boys? Is that well, Socrates? That, that, the no, I, I don't think any of them did. Oh, there's there's somebody. I I know they there was one philosopher that was like famous for that. It might have yeah, been I think or talk, Socrates, one of the two. There's like a more modern French like there's more modern French philosophers who supported pedophilia. Everybody's a fucking pedophile. <laughs> um, are you a pedophile i hope not no <laughs> <laughs> i hope i don't become one <laughs> like shit i don't know <laughs> if i keep eating this country's food it might turn me american you food makes america- you gay and pedophilic um what country has the most <laughs> pedophiles do you know i have no idea i wouldn't be surprised if it's america I, my guess is the country with the most amount of people because just statistically, which is America, yeah. No, America is in like India or no, China. Well, probably, is I, I, I know. Well, yes, because like I, um, these um, Franciscan friars actually explained in this video that six um, percent of world institutions are pedophiles, which is really scary to think about. <laughs> so, like that six percent. Well, it's just institutions. So I don't know. It's hard to just say like what number that is because it's like well what constitutes in a human institution you know it's billions of them i guess something that's organized like trafficking is like if you look up the statistics on trafficking whether it's sexual or uh labor or whatever i feel like it's a pretty big right. institute i think like institution meaning like it's you can tangibly have money that can be traced back to it like it's a it's semi-organized ah, i see or very well organized um, Man, so that's every hundred people, there's going to be six of them. Yeah, I mean, also depends on what you're, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like, legally in this country, it's 18. In some countries, it's 16. In some countries, it's yeah, what fucking are they, free game. What are they doing? What is it in Europe? Like, It's probably 16 know? in some countries, I think. Mm-hmm. But again, but I, to so me, like, pedophile, like, is, like, someone that's, you know, less than... 13 or 14 or you know just someone that's not cl- like i don't know like i i won't be attracted to like teenagers but like i don't think because like the 16 and 18 thing like obviously like if you're a 40 year old and you're gonna date a 16 year old that's gross but if you're gonna date an 18 year old when you're 40, 18 that's well that's that's, that's what my point is like you're yeah, arguing yeah, over yeah, four okay. years of like so i don't know where yeah. to draw the line it's just all weird to me so like legally yeah it's 16 and 18 but I don't know. When you think of like pedophilia, you think of like young kids. I, yeah, I guess. But I mean, I, I still like, like you, you brought up with like the 40 and 16 and 18 is still weird. Yeah. I mean, a large age gap at a formative year is weird, but I don't know what the cutoff is. Like I, I, I remember, um, like a 21 and 18 year old, like a lot of people find that gross too, but they're not that far apart. Really? I guess the that's only, not th- now nah, that's, like no 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 twenty like twenty eight and eighteen that's yeah that's that's, that's too far like, no the only thing that's that I, too far. that I will say is like you know like a twenty one year old can drink and an eighteen year old can't so that's really the biggest dynamic I guess um, but I don't think it's pedophilia for a twenty one year old to date a seventeen year old or an eighteen year old if I'm being honest yeah I mean it's I mean literally like back you know in biblical times you were pretty much an adult when you were like fourteen so. Yeah, I mean, you can make the argument like, oh, they're really mature for their age, Your Honor. <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, but um, I still have no problem with like the laws, though, that are set up. I yeah. think it's I, I, f- I literally have no problem with that. I feel but, like 18 is a good number, you know, 
you're out of if you're out of high i feel like if you're out of high school like if you're in college then i think you're legally an adult but again if it's a massive age gap and also it's a power dynamic too like if you're in even even like not even if you're a massive age gap apart like if you just have way too much power over one individual person or your dynamic is so skewed to where you just all the leverage tips your way i still think that's weird not even the age yeah. gap thing but yeah i mean if someone's 27 and the other guy is 60 like who gives a fuck oh yeah like like 30 and 50 is not as bad as like I mean, that's still like, I don't like, cause like I've, I've had some friends like they, their parents are, like 20 years apart. Yeah. I think my parents I'm are like, like nine years apart, but again, they met when they were in their late twenties, early thirties or some shit. So yeah. But at that point, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. it, it, it's like you get to the point where it's like, you don't really, I mean, you age, but it's like, you're essentially this person you're going to be for like the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, me right now, like, cause I'm 25. So like, I wouldn't date somebody that's younger than 21. Like they at least have to be able to drink, but I, I don't like, I don't have in common with a lot of people that are like so much younger than me. Cause I've always been more mature for my age. So like, I've always been to people that were older or like not that much younger than me, or if they are younger than me, like they're on my maturity level. <laughs> so you're like, I was born in the wrong generation. No, not even that. It's just like, I don't want to keep up. I was with like, them. oh, you're one of those. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. No. I just don't want to keep up. Yeah. So for me, I, I feel like I wouldn't go younger than 21 or 22 as of where I'm at right now. I've, yeah. I've always raised the number as I can always add a year. So like if I'm 26, yeah. I'll probably put the 23. You know what I mean? Well, I wouldn't go. I don't really know. Cause you know, <laughs> I feel like right now, like four years, um, younger or older is a good threshold all right well i mean i've never you know because like, <laughs> so it, it's weird in my brain because like i i date a 29 year old but i wouldn't date a 30 year old <laughs> yeah it's that one it, it, it it's like when when like you're you're in school and you're like you keep looking at the clock and it's like the class ends at six o'clock and then it's like 529. Yeah. Oh, it's going to take forever. But it's like 530. Oh, oh, it's halfway done. <laughs> it's really weird because like the, the 29 year old could be like way more mature than the 30 year old. But just like, I don't know why. It's just like, it's not even that much time. But I just feel like the 30 year old is going to dry up and die quicker. I, I, I don't. It's irrational, but it's how I feel. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, I need to use the bathroom really quick. God, I got a fucking monologue without you. Yep. Say something. I don't know. Just Just entertain my guests. I just want everybody to know that this is Will's cover and he's actually a pedophile. I don't want to tell him on camera because he might be on me, but I've actually been investigating him for about a couple of years now and I'm on his tail. This is all a facade. I'm coming for you, Will. I'm so coming for you. That's all I got. Now it's just going to be awkward silence until he gets back. I hope he's a quick pisser. I hope he doesn't take a shit, too. That would suck. Just have me sit here for three minutes by myself is a long time. I'm not a commentary channel. I can't just throw out some fucking topics and ask anybody what they've seen in the news lately. I guess I have to think about what happened in the news lately. God damn it. All this shit from the James Webb telescope is cool, huh? You like seeing all those high-def pictures? The fuck you know these galaxies and planets? They're, they're so colorful. Huh? Is that cool, dude? You, you're into space now because they put a new telescope in the sky? Never heard about it before to see the pictures on Facebook. Now you're into astronomy? Huh? You like that? You like you like that topical? They just discovered a black hole that could be a wormhole? Is that cool? Do you like that? They'll keep you entertained? Yeah, they'll keep you entertained. Holy fuck, how long is this? Jesus Christ, I feel like it's been forever. I feel like an hour has passed by in this time and where I'm just endlessly riffing into the void. I feel like... Okay, have you been talking the whole time? Yes, I have. And I think you'll be... All right. <laughs> it felt like it was an hour. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because the dopamine. Dopamine, bro. The, the, you had the, the, the high and then you crashed. I was about to crash hard, but you came in at the right time. Thank you for saving my oh, life. Nice. I almost shot myself. Oh, I'm glad I uh, prevented that because <laughs> I don't want you doing that. <laughs> um, oh, I completely forgot we had the album and we never really finished, I guess. Well, there weren't that many <laughs> songs mean, on it. Was there any more songs well, you want to talk about? 
Not really. I mean, it was really short. Um, it's only like forty minutes, I think. Yeah, it's not a long album because it takes a lot to make that fucking shit. But um, well, I guess in conclusion, I'll put like it wasn't a waste of my time. <laughs> Um, but it's like, <laughs> you should write that review. Wasn't a waste of time, but it was close. <laughs> and, no, it was not. This was not close to a waste of time. But um, no, I mean, I just. It's just like a five or a six. It's like, a, I mean, a six is above average, but like, I mean. But I hate to say it's average because, like, it's not, like, it's not generic. It just doesn't speak like, to you. Yeah, I guess so. And like five is honestly like because I don't want to listen to a five out of ten album. I want to listen to either like a ten or like YMS. Uh, Your movie sucks explains this concept perfectly. How he says the most offensive rating he gives a movie is a five because he either wants to watch the best of the best or the worst of the worst. Or, like yeah. he wants to be in awe of how amazing something is the ten, or he wants to be like just you know dying laughing with how awful something is with a one like he doesn't want to watch a boring movie that's just generic that's like it's it, it's the worst most painful experience well i mean it's like with but, it, it's just like with albums right like if you listen to the band's discography like it depends on like if you like more of the songs then you don't like but it's just the fact that like you like three or two of the songs on this album but you didn't like the rest of the three you know it's just it comes down to what the song you know what i mean that's why i'm not really an albums person like i all my playlists are the songs I like from each album. Like, it's the best songs that I like to listen to. And the ones I don't like, I don't have them on my playlist. So it's just the fact that they were on this album. So that, that's what I'm saying. So that's why with sometimes with album reviews, like, I, I tend not to listen to them. Because, you know, if I listen to an album where it's, like, eight songs and, like, all the seven are fucking terrible, but there's one song I absolutely love, like, I, I would have rather, like... I, I like knowing that I have a song I can listen to that I can add to my playlist, even if I don't like the rest of the album. Like, it doesn't matter to me. I still am an album person. Yeah. Because, like, I don't really have a, a metal playlist still. You don't have a playlist? Not really for metal, no. I mean, I have playlists for all of my Spanish music, but... You gotta make one for the gym. That's, like, the most important... I did, but then, like, I kind of stopped listening to my own music in the gym, just because, like, I hated having the my music in conjunction with the music that was playing in, on the speakers in the gym. Your headphones weren't good enough? You? No, I mean, they were fine, but, like, I mean, I don't know. Just <laughs> Why were you me. mixing the outside like... music with your music that's not loud enough? No, what... no, 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 it wasn't, like, intentional. What the, my point is the fact you're able to hear the outside music, Will. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily 100% clearly, but I could. it, it was still there like at least to an extent and it just kind of like ended up bothering me and i was like yeah i just this doesn't feel right for my head like it just didn't <laughs> feel good i don't know kind of autistic shit what do you are you wearing headphones or earbuds oh both what does it happen with more no but even so like i mean i mean it happened more obviously with the headphones but even so like i mean i just felt as the point where i was like yeah i don't like having headphones on because i mean if someone is like coming to talk to me then i don't want to have to like pause the music like i'll just i don't know that's why it's perfect dude anytime i'm at the gym and i have headphones in and this and this is not current because my fucking phone doesn't have a goddamn aux short aux port so i haven't had like bluetooth earphones in a while um but th i don't fucking want to talk to people at the gym because like if I want, like, there's no one I, there's no one I really want to talk to. It's, it's so annoying when I'm sitting in the sauna and people just want to, like, you know, have you ever been in the sauna and then people just stare at you like they're gonna talk to you and it takes them like a couple seconds? I'm just like, oh, I wish I had headphones right now. Oh, my gym doesn't have a sauna. Well, if yours eventually gets one or you transfer, it's a fucking awful feeling, and I wish I just had. I need to get fucking headphones. I'm tired of it. I don't want to interact with people at the gym. Oh, but <laughs> when I was at LSU. When I was at LSU in March and I went to the gym there with my buddy, we had some great sauna conversations with the other guys there. <laughs> See, like, I don't have those experiences. I always get the stupid fucking bullshit or, like, the people that, like, ask me for favors. Like, hey, man, can I? Like, no, you can't. Whatever you're going to say, no, okay. you can't. Like, hey. So I guess we're, like, the op opposite because like, I talk to so many people at the gym. It's a large portion of, like, my social interactions. I'm... Um, you know, like... A lot of people, like, you know, ask me for spots or they ask me, like, hey, how are you coming on with this lift or something like that? 
I don't know. I guess we're just like the complete opposites. No, I'm sociable, but only for like specific kinds of people. Because like at my job, I can fucking I love talking to people. I talk to people all day. But at the gym, it's always just fucking just just cough syrup drinking morons. I don't want to fucking talk to you. Like if it takes them five like five minutes to say three words, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> Maybe you should come to my gym. Because like you'd actually probably like the people in my gym. <sighs> Are you allowed to bring guests in? Um, yeah, for like a certain amount of, um, days, I think. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, if I'm with you at the gym, then I'll be interacting with you and it's fine. But I'm saying like if when I'm by myself, mm-hmm. I don't want to fucking interact with anyone at the gym. I'm not going to give a shit. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, so you get a free trial and it regardless for like a week, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to just change to this gym, I think you get like a discount because I referred you or something. I have to do a sauna, man. I, I fucking love the sauna. I can't do a gym without a sauna. It is, the it is my cool. life. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It the is, sauna is cool. The only like de stressor I have in my whole life. I can be like fuming fucking mad. I'll like get all my testosterone, lose some hair, fucking pump iron, and then like I'll just sit in the sauna and that shit just goes away and like I come out a a spiritual man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Make savage the body, make civilized the mind. Exactly. Plus, there's just so many fucking health benefits to using the sauna. So it's like I just, I just, I can't live without one. Yep. You sound like someone who drinks kombucha. I drank it for a while, but like, <laughs> I don't know. It was all right. I I don't get I in. Kombucha. I don't get into shit like that. I don't fucking like be like, dude. This changed my life. I'm like, I'm not that kind of person. Right. Because I'm like the only thing that changed my life was Jesus. So. <laughs> That in that regard, I will be like, ha, yes. What's a close second? Jesus, cr- Christianity. <laughs> you gotta, What's you a know, close you third? gotta trust this. <laughs> close second? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Why yes, third? I didn't even say second yet. Because I thought you said um, Jesus was first and Christianity was second. I thought you were going there. Oh no, I, I was just saying like you know just generally like Jesus and like Christianity and all this cool like Christian stuff. That's you know. Okay, so it's a close second. Uh, Spanish. Really? Oh, yeah. Spanish has done so many good things to me. It's, like, insane. See, I wish I knew, like, Spanish fluently because I would enjoy talking to people in a different language. Like, I've I've never been able to have a conversation with somebody in another language. I've been able to, like, understand some words or, like, you know, say something, like, a couple words to people. What's so cool about being able to speak another language, it's, 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 like, almost as if, like, you're, like, a different not okay not not like you're a different person like you have like split personalities but it's like like will speaking spanish like i'm gonna say different things and word things differently than like will speaking english you know and like because because like there's a really big cultural aspect to a language so like they have like their way of expressing certain things and like also like you know you have to adjust to like an entire different you know like i said culture like history of like people places and things so, like you know because like when we talk we have like the american kind of thing in our in our mindset like you know we know like american actors musicians politicians all that stuff but then like when you speak in another language you have to like think of, you have to kind of think of like hmm like who are the people that like they're gonna reference and joke about and and all that stuff you know yeah and like man like it's 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 it, it just there's so many good things that speaking another language does. And, um, and like I said, like, don't take you're like, you're almost like a different person as like a r- wrong thing, but it's, it, it's, it's almost like, it, it, it's, it's like two modes. It's so cool. It's almost like two musical modes, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's very fucking good for your brain to learn another language. And that's partly Definitely. why it frustrates. Like, I just, I don't have the time to like learn and practice it to where I'd be able to be fluent. Like I just don't like, I don't have anybody close to me that speaks Spanish that could actually help. Cause like I've taken like, I like, I took fucking, hey, don't you live in Manessas? <laughs> but no, like not like, I don't like, I don't have like a, like a person oh, I yeah, see okay. every day to help me. Like I, I'd have to live with somebody that primarily spoke Spanish and a little bit of English that would help me to fucking like guilt. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, but even like when I took German, I, when I really tried to study and do it, like I just, I couldn't do it. And after like year four, when I took like two years of break, I forgot everything. So it's like, I just don't, I just can't get the the memories. My memory is just horrible for shit like that. I'm such a visual person. Mm -hmm. Like I can, so I guess like, I can't do it. Sorry. I'm sorry. 
But like, are you like me in the sense where I, if I'm going to, I want to learn a language that I can be able to speak to people in, you know, Yeah. because I, I really just want to speak it, you know? Yeah. Whereas like, so you're like that? Yeah. I wish I was like the, you know, the guy on YouTube, uh, Zhao Ma, I think is his name. He's that white dude that goes Yeah. Like, I if love I, that guy. If I had the ability, I would fucking love to do that. I love traveling. I would love to speak to any, like, I would want to be, like, if I had it my way, I would get to the point where, like, I could speak any fucking language fluently and understand every language if I had the power to do it. But, like, I just, I'm so phonetical with shit. So it got to the point where, like, even, like, with Spanish and in German, like, I could, like, read a sentence and pronounce it and understand and memorize words. But the second you, like, speak it to me, especially quickly, it just, I lost, I couldn't just understand it for some odd reason. Even though it was the same. Oh sentence. yeah, like when you, when you go colloquial and stuff like that, it's 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 very hard. Yeah. I mean, like, cause like a lot of like Spanish speakers tell me, like here they tell me how like when they hear British people talking, like they have absolutely no idea what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what are you talking? <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, but also like another really cool thing about language yeah, about languages that there's so many things you can do with it like i said because it essentially has four components right um like a a language you can speak it read it write it and understand it right essentially yeah and they're all kind of independent things right because like you know you can speak a language but you know you might not necessarily understand it read it or write it you know like a politician just like memorizing a thing to say to you know the minority group or whatever <laughs> but or it's like you know you can understand it but that does not mean that you can you could speak it read it or write it and and everything you know it's like the whole cycle um but that's why like when you can master all four of those when the, you can read it write it understand it and speak it it's it, it's it's like you have all the four elements in yeah. And uh, you're like, you're the airbender. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have like a understanding is a big thing. So like if I could understand, but I, I mean, I guess for my business right now, I, I don't really need to understand it because I can just like use translators and people know and like I know enough English for someone to translate something broken to me. And I'm sure they know enough Spanish you know, back and forth. So that's not a problem. I wish I was just mm-hmm. able to fluently speak it. Because it's very useful, especially for where we live. Like, if I was able to speak Spanish as opposed to just making Adrian do all of it, like, I fucking, I'd be 10 times more useful. Yeah. Like, I have no... You could fire Adrian. I I think the other problem, too, is, like, I don't, like, outside of me thinking it would be useful, I don't really have, like, a desire to talk to people in Spanish. Like, I I don't give a shit if I talk to them in Spanish or in English. Like, it doesn't really affect me either way, because I'd rather just not talk to people in general. But just having the ability right. to do it would be right. cool. And also because it's useful. Right. Um, well, yes, absolutely. Um, that brings me up to another really um, important thing when like you learn a language. It's because it's like you need to pick a language based on like, you know, like like there has to be like you have to actually. I'm not saying this in like and like a stereotypical way or like a like a race kind of thing, but like I'm like you have to be learning a language of like a culture that like you're into, you know, like you, you like their stuff. You like their, yeah. you know, you like their literature, you like their history, their religion, their culture, you know? So that's why like Spanish goes really well for me because like, you know, people who speak Spanish are typically, you know, they're going to be Catholic. They're going to, ha- they're going to, you know, have these certain things that like, I, I, I find interesting, you know, like I like Spanish clothing. I like their architecture, I, you know, I got, I love, you know, like their religious traditions, stuff like that, where it's like, I mean, it, on the flip side of that, you know, like someone who's learning Japanese and is like a weeb, you know, they're <laughs> like, yeah, I, I like Japanese stuff. I like yeah. anime. I like manga. I like the whole history of the samurai. Like there's, you have, there has to be like this, like kind of like, you know, iceberg, you know, of like the, you need to plunge in there and like, and have a bunch of stuff that you could find and, and, and grab onto. Yeah. Or else. Cause it's like the reason why English is so easy to learn essentially is just because like there's so much stuff done in it where it's like do you know anything that's done in you know sentinelese or like any other like random language because it's like those sentinelese, languages are so hard like the fucking island of yeah Close i off. mean i was using that as like a <laughs> yeah i mean i was using that as a joke but like or, or like even like the you know, like the the Hawaiian language, it's it, right. it, it's it's because like there's, well, I mean, 
no, nah, like an, another example would be like the like the Frisian language. Like I brought that up in my in my video because like Frisian is already like people confuse it as like a dialect of like this other language, and then it's like or or like Flemish, you know, like a Flemish. A lot of people is are just like, oh, it's just a dialect of Dutch, but then because it's like a lot of people like just don't want to learn it just because they're like, I mean, I think the Flemish are like kind of cool and they have their own history, but they they're just like exactly right, yeah, like they're like I don't really care about that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the the one concept that people struggle with is like you have to know culture to understand a language. You can't just l- you do, learn yeah. a language and have no concept of how they live their lives in whatever country you're speaking. But yeah, I, I like Spanish culture. I like the food. Um, but I just, I, I think like I like the idea of being, because I can't speak another language fluently, it's just like I don't care what that language is. I just want to be able to do one. But like Spanish is obviously the most useful for living where we live. So it's like, it's not like Spanish in particular that I really want to learn. I think that's the problem. I think it'd be cool if I could speak Spanish and speak it fully. I like how the language sounds, but like, I don't have like a desire to like really understand and know Spanish. I just, I, if it was fucking Mandarin or Dutch or whatever the fuck, if we lived in a place where a lot of people spoke another language, it'd just be whatever that language is. It doesn't make a difference to me. Oh yeah. Same. Like, I mean, if we were literally... My dad was like, pack your stuff. We're moving to Estonia tomorrow. Like, I'd instantly start trying to learn Estonia. Yeah. Where, if I had if I had to go somewhere, I'd be like, fuck, I would struggle for a couple of years. I'd really try to learn the language of the place that I'm in. But if I had to pick a language that sounds really cool that I really want to learn, I'd want to learn, like, um, one of the Nordic ones. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like, based on the sound? Yeah, I like how it sounds. I like how Spanish... Ooh, I, yeah. I do like how Spanish sounds. Um... I, I kind of like the yeah, sound I love, of French I, too. I love, yeah, like the Latin. I love the sound of the Latin languages. Yeah. And like, I love how each of them has their own kind of flavor to it. Like, you know, Spanish and French, like you can tell they're like related, but you know, they yeah. got their own specific identity and they got like Italian Yeah, and then por- Portuguese has its own cool spin on it. It's cool. I think Greek um, sounds cool too. I'd love to learn Greek too. Oh, Greek. Yeah. Like, you know, the, have you ever heard any of like the gospel recited in Greek? I may have, but not off the top of my head, no. It's like the equivalent of like hearing the Quran in Arabic. Like, I mean, obviously, no. I mean, I think like you know, Islam is false. Yeah. The Quran is, is like evil, <laughs> but like it, it's. I, I'll admit, like when they sing the Quran in Arabic, it sounds cool. Like it's badass. That's but the like thing. The, the, I, I think I always thought the Arabic was kind of like German. So it's like German is a very aggressive sounding language. Arabic is too. But if you do it like Arabic, like Arabic song is fucking beautiful. But like when I've heard like, and I don't know, obviously there might be different dialects. Um, but like, oh, there's a bajillion yeah, dialects. I, of I know Arabic. I'm kind of pigeonholing myself, but I when yeah, I've heard a couple people. I, I don't know what it, it might be Arabic or Farsi or whatever the fuck. But like, there's there's also a massive Muslim population, especially like in the gym that I go to, and they all speak mm. a language that sounds like it's the same or it's similar, but it's a very aggressive sounding. So it's like it's weird. Yeah. But it's like German. Um. Yeah, but um, sorry. But yeah, like I was saying, like the the Christian equivalent of that is like when they sing the gospel in Greek. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Or like even when, like when they recite it, and like you have the people like humming in the background, like the oh, yeah, and then the guy just goes like, "But do you want them?" <laughs> like uh, you know, there's like the inarchino logos, caino logos, protonteon, caiteon, ino logos. I just put it on the and like it goes. It's so awesome. Yeah. And like it just it rolls off his tongue like the anthropo and like you you hear all of those different Greek things that you recognize. You know, like like when he says like anthropos, like you know when he's saying anthropos, he's he's talking about man just because of anthropology. Yeah. Yeah. Or a lot like of our the, words the co- originate from Latin and Greek. Yeah, or he says like cosmos, like you know what he's talking about there. Yeah. It's it's it, it's cool. Yeah, and like and you just see that and you see that connection we have to like you know the greek culture it's like oh wow yeah yeah um i think italian sounds but, ridiculous i fucking it's really goofy even though it's close to there's that there's actually like a lot of different dialects of italian um some of them sound pretty nice and then some of them i think sound like really cringe you ever notice that like and this is to me like i've noticed with a lot of just european speaking people in general like there's there's a specific type of person that, like, they all seem like they're the same person. They have a very generic, yeah, like, European you, accent, not, like, special. Like, you can you, tell if they're French, German, or fucking whatever. 
Yeah, you you told me that. Yeah, where it's like they could literally be like Swedish or something. Yeah, it's like you have no idea where these fuckers are from because their accent is very neutral. Just because like I don't I don't like recognize any of the I lo- I recognize some German, so some Germanic sounding shit I can like oh that's like you know Nordic or Danish or some German shit because um, it's it's kind of similar. But like if they're speaking like French or italian but if they talk in english they all have like the same kind of accent for s- the specific dialect i can't put my finger on but I they just sound european that's just, i think that's just because of like the way that they were taught english i think that's how it works yeah because they all learn english but yeah like some people you can totally tell what accent or where they're from from the accent but then there's others where it's like you could be from like a million different countries you just sound european oh yeah right exactly like you're just some generic hot european dude you see in like a tell like a show you know <laughs> god you know me. um like like the st- the stereotypical like venetian dude you know, like yeah. who, who's like on the gondola like singing the song <laughs> prime example there's um, a there's a dude that's uh argentinian he comes into the the shop every now and again but when you hear him talk he sounds like he has a french accent oh this do i know him no Okay. But it, like, it's weird. Like, he sounds like the fucking... He, he reminds me of the singer of Gojira when he speaks English. It's really fucking funny. He's from, like, Argentina. Oh, okay. I've never heard him, but... Well, I mean, that make that kind of makes sense because Spanish and French is, like, similar. But it's, like... What, like, doesn't make sense is that there'll be, there'll be someone from, like, Denmark who will sound the same as, like, someone from, like, Italy. Or, yeah. like, Cro- Croatia. And it's, like, what? Why do you guys have the same... Excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, that might be it, right. It's just the way that they learn English is oh. more of a neutral. Dude, you know my sleeper pick for the coolest sounding language ever is? Go for it. Serbo-Croatian is the most badass, like, oh man, it's it's so, it, it's like Russian, but cooler. Do you know a phrase? Can you do the accent? Um... No, I can't. But it it has like that that Russian like the brojdem, brojdem. Like it's it, it's so awesome. I'm I don't even know what I'm saying, but it's just like they have like this. I was I was listening to this like this Serbian Orthodox priest explaining Christian doctrine, and he sounded so awesome when he was saying it. You know, like the. When he was saying, like, you know, the God, like, for the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and through the Trinity, we know, like, everything about the faith. Yeah. I don't even know what the words he was saying, but he was just like, I just the 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 He just had this cool, like, this demanding presence. I don't know. It was cool. And also, he had the, like, sickest beard ever, so that also helped. Yeah, he always helps if you have a nice beard. Yep. Like the dude in Amoris Perros. <laughs> God. You're going to talk about that dude till you yep. die. Yeah, he's a cool dude. I think um, one of the another accent that I like is, and this is, I I I don't know if I've heard like Korean people talk like this. It's been more exclusively with like certain Japanese and certain Chinese people when they have like a very soft spoken um, accent. It's not twangy, hmm. but it's not like oh. overemphasized. It's like I said, it's just very smooth and soft. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I've um, always enjoyed that too. That accent. Right. I really like Swedish people when they speak English. Yeah, Swedish people are cool when they speak English. And a lot of them almost sound American. There's some Swedish people that have, like, a very small accent. Oh, they speak such good English over there. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like some of them, you clearly can hear them have an accent. Like, the, the singer for Ghost is a as an example. Like, when you hear him talk, like, he sounds like he's fucking American. But then, like, when you listen to him, like, certain words, you, you totally can tell that he's either lived in another country. But he was, like, born oh, and raised in Sweden. He's Swedish? Okay. Yeah. But like I said, when you hear him talk, you barely hear his accent. And then there's other people oh, okay. that when you hear them talk like Ole England, you can fucking totally tell that they're Swedish. Right. Um, uh, yeah, but um, what was I going to say? Like, the, yeah, but like a lot of these like, these like Europeans that like speak such good English and I'm just like... Do you ever speak your like own language? <laughs> like like yeah. everyone in Sweden speaks English. Like everyone in Denmark and Norway, like they all speak English. I'm like, do you ever speak your own language? Like they even speak, they can speak it like amongst each other. Yeah. So I'm like, do you ever speak Swedish? Or <laughs> like I'm like, I've never heard you speak Swedish. What's interesting is um because my uh, girlfriend's Filipino, we've been watching a bunch of 
um, Filipino shit and the language that they speak to Galug is is interesting because they mix like English words with it so they can start a language in Tagalog and then they'll like they'll emphasize their last couple words to make a point in English and so like the way she explained mm-hmm. it is like if oh, you yeah. it sometimes yeah. is an insult because the people that will walk around and speak more English to you it's it's like a it's a it's a title it's the fact that you feel like you're more educated than the person you're talking to but it's strange because like they'll go back like in her aunts and um, other people that she knows, like when we have gatherings, like they'll be talking in Tagalog and then they'll just fucking switch up into English and then go right back into the original language. It's really interesting. Yeah. But it's not like it's like they speak in, well, obviously they, they speak English, but like if you go to like them, like native speakers like that, they, there's no white people around. They'll speak English to each other. It's really strange. Yeah. I mean, I think it is one of the official languages. Well, that be official language. My point is, like, even if there's no reason. Oh, for right. That doesn't speak, necessarily like, mean it's. They're not like making a... a video where they're not talking to a foreigner. Like they're talking with their friends. They'll still like mix English words with them, which is really interesting. Yeah, or like I mean, even like some Spanish speakers, like not even like here, but like in other countries, you know, like in in Amores Paris, like the guy just said like brother, you know, like yeah, or like or as un buen business, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's more of like because you're you know pertaining to a Western audience on because you're got to figure like there's gonna be some people that are watching there. It's gonna be have a that's where you become famous is there, and that's I think. No, that's but what, I mean, a lot of people do talk like that though. I mean, it's like when we say like you like when we say like oh hey amigo or so like we just we throw in like some random Spanish word for no reason. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I think that's the other difficult part is like like with English like if I was living in another country like especially when it's involved in the curriculum of the school like they force you to learn English but also the fact that like our media is so present around the world so like, there's going to be at oh, least yeah. music that you're listening to or something you'll watch that'll be in English um, so like I think the fact that we and, don't like, have to that me, here yeah but that's like lame to me because like, I don't like how like if I leave my home country like I don't have to fear that there'll be that there will not be anyone who speak my own language. It's like there will always be people speak English in an airport. Yeah. There's always going to be people speaking English in like a big city. So it's like, am I even getting like the real experience? <laughs> well, the fact that you're American, no. If you're like a... No. You're not, if, you, if you're an American going anywhere, you're not going to get any sort of real experience. That's why I always tell people like anytime I've traveled, Unless... I tell people I'm Canadian and it works. <laughs> yeah. Or unless like From if you speak... Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, like the, the most like cosmopolitan yeah. part of Canada. It sounds stupid, or, but people really don't know that much about Canada outside of the world. So they're just like, "Oh, that's cool. You're not American." Like that's 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 how it's viewed. It's really fucking funny. Right? Exactly. Like because anyone besides America, it's like, "Oh, you you have like, you're 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 not America, dude." <laughs> I'm I'm not fucking shitting you. When I was on a cruise ship, I was talking to these um and and British guys and like Spanish guys seem to be the ones that because like i me and my brother-in-law we would get drunk and we'd fuck with people there was one night where we pretended we were from fucking croatia and we were walking around like borat it was really dumb (laughs) we were we got drunk as fuck together it was it was some great times anyway but we would go and mess with people and dig surveys we'd tell people from like different like parts of the world so like anytime we'd walk up and like start conversations with people they would kind of give us that like kind of like scowl but then we told them from canada and they totally lightened their mood it was really wild Oh, that's hilarious. So that shit's real, man. Yeah, if you're an American, you're not going to get an authentic experience. You're going to get ripped off. You're going to get fucking exploited, yeah. all that shit. It's just how the way the world is. But, but yeah, I mean, unless, it is a privilege like, to be able to speak English with a lot of different cultures. I've always found that cool because it's forced. That is, yeah, that is at the end of the day is kind of cool. It is a is massive like, privilege, you, you, though. I do understand that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't understand how privileged you are. So. <laughs> um. Oh, no, I was going to say, like, when you were speaking Croatian, were you speaking it just like that Serbian priest impression I was doing? No, it was just retarded. We were fucking... We were, they, we were talking they, like they, Borat, pretty much. Mm. Oh, yeah, because they speak the same language. I mean, it, it was not like... An, it, we just I just thought it was funny to name a random country that mm-hmm. people don't... You know what I mean? Like, But it was just like... Oh, a, yeah, okay, okay. It was just okay. a stupid, like, Slavic, stereotypical, like, hoity-toity accent. It wasn't anything fucking, like... It, we were just being drunk and dumb. <laughs> I see. Wasn't like, we're going to um, drop some fucking geological knowledge on you. Or geographical. <laughs> geological. <laughs> we're throw rocks at you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, as long as, like, if you go to another country that isn't in like africa or asia and 
you have dark hair and dark eyes and like you can speak whatever language of like the country you're going to and you know how to dress in a more to a way that they dress like you could totally convince them that you're not american your accent has to be like on point like you have to understand like the cultural regional dialect that you're trying to speak you know what i mean like you really got you can't just like necessarily know the language. You, yeah you, you gotta you know but like, more than know the language no but you can you can you can say that like oh you're from like another part or you could just say like oh you're like and you know you're an you're an ethnicity that's like super close so then like i learned your language but that's why i don't speak you know like like if you don't speak good spanish necessarily you could just be like oh i'm portuguese so like you know you could just have that like excuse to fall back onto i guess but i but, I so, like it only so works then they'd here be like, because ah, we're such a massive okay. country with like like there's there could be a dude speaking some bullshit dialect and like be from some random state like arkansas or something and i have no idea but like if you're like going to a smaller country like italy or greece like it's a lot more homogenized than america is and especially because like there's a lot of people right, that like but- you can like like a lot of british people or other types of europeans will like fake an american accent for a show and like you'll never fucking know until they tell you sometimes Oh yeah, like the, no, like when Tim Roth, when I found out he was British, I was like, "What?" Yeah, some people are really great at it. Yeah. Oh, but my point was more so like you can convince them that you're not American, oh, not necessarily. Sure. Let's just say, yeah, it, yeah. For me, like I, I'm not like I'm not good at faking another language or accent to the T. So that's why I just tell them I'm Canadian. Right. Even though like um, my yeah. accent is very like mid Atlantic. <laughs> You could still pass as Canadian. Yeah, I mean, if I really tried to be all dorky and radio voicey. Yeah, a boot. <laughs> Talking boot. Uh, you know, like the Jordan Peterson accent, like that. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's shit. <laughs> or just sound like you're yeah. from Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> that is awful. I hate that accent. Yeah, I hate that. I hate the Wisconsin accent, the Chicago accent. Any north, any yeah, like, like that, midwestern, eh, northeastern like accent. Eh, eh, I yeah. hate that. Come on, like what? Yeah, like oh, it's gross. Yeah, it's right. It's a disgusting um, dialect. You know what's really gross is the Pittsburgh accent. I can't even do it. I mean, oh yeah, you you show me that. It's awful. Yeah. It's like kind of British. Like I was like, what? It's disgusting. It's the grossest dialect we yeah. have in this country. They should change it. What's the? <laughs> what is the best English accent for America? I, th- I guess for anything. Uh, I like some southern accents, but again, like I, I'm more drawn to smoother talking accents. But I like smoother talking British accents, smoother talking southern accents. I hate the I hate every northeast accent. All that shit's fucking gross. The mm-hmm. the west coast accent is only annoying because they they like L A. They accentuate the vowels. Like that shit's fucking stupid. Um, some southern shit sounds retarded, but yeah, I, I'm more drawn to smooth accents. But yeah, I don't. The Midwest, I, I don't like either. Right, I absolutely love like the highbrow, high class, like English, like London accent. Yeah. That is like I'm like, yeah, like I, I can't, you've seen the Jungle Book, right? Yeah. They, that guy who voices Shere Khan. That's like the I love that accent. That yeah. accent's so good. Yeah, like the especially like for like when women are talking, like the Kira Knightley is like right prime, but then versus someone like adele she has a very gross fucking like i i wish i knew what diet there's like oh yeah i forgot she's british oh but yeah Her, but she has she, like the gross. oh i hate that yeah she she yeah. does like the <laughs> chose day in it like she does that kind of shit i don't know like the but yeah there's i can't like, remember there's um there's scouse like there's the, fuck, james corden <laughs> That is like everything wrong with the British accent. I hate James Corden with a passion, dude. I think everybody does. We we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah every, uh, that's a fucking dead horse. Is James Corden? His whole career has been a dead horse. Um, yeah, I know. He apparently, I saw a scroll in memes, and then it said like, "Come join us." And then it was like all of the people that have like had like allegations or whatever. And I was like, "Oh wait, he did that." Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he's a fucking asshole. But anyway, but yeah. So like, Kira Knightley prime example of a british accent i could listen to all day but if adele talks to me i want to punch her in the face (laughs) (laughs) um some of the scottish accents kind of cool irish it depends sometimes it sounds goofy sometimes it's pretty smooth yeah some of the irish accents i'm like like what are you saying now like 
the the one like the, are we in the car <laughs> that's awful what the fuck is that supposed to be <laughs> it said we're in the car it's... we're in the car <laughs> what the fuck that's not irish what the fuck is that that is irish no, it's not it does not sound anything yes, it like is. irish accents they say the car <laughs> It sounds like Peter. Yes, you're talking they like do. Peter Griffin. It sounds like Peter Griffin. Yeah, Peter Griffin is like that's like the whole joke is that he's like an Irish. No, like, he has New a Englander. fucking New England accent. Yes, but where does New England get that influence from? All it's our, Irish. All our fucking accents derive from some UK accent. That's not my point. Not, <laughs> Irish people don't Irish, sound like they're though. from Boston. Will. <laughs> well, there's multiple different Irish accents though. Like it's not like none of like, them Dublin sound like a... fucking Boston though. <laughs> That's not Boston, though. It sounds like, you straight like, like Boston. Like the, we would never do this in the other car. Like, that's what they sound like. To that, Okay, that that one sounded more like it. The first, you see the it, first like, one okay. you did didn't sound like it. I guess it's just because you didn't have, like, the full... S- I, I, I The sentence wasn't long enough, I guess. <laughs> My brain couldn't process it quick enough. Yep, it's because it was Irish. <laughs> Dude, right. the, the one fucking um, accent I will always laugh at is the fucking Vietnamese one, man. I can't, like, it's just, anytime I try to hear it, it just fucking makes me laugh. Same with Indian. Like, Indian accents are fucking hilarious to me. Indian one's so goofy. Oh, I'm like, God. <laughs> it's more of, like, um Indian men. Like, Indian women. Again, the dialect. Uh, there's the smoother talking ones. Oh, and, I, like, the, the really I agree older, with you. The more, uh, the more. I agree with you. The more uh, vibratoed right. Indians. <laughs> no, but I, I I love it when like I'm listening to them like speaking their like own language, and you see how much like English loan words they're in. like they'll just say like the send, and then you just hear the English word like the oh you put a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Yeah. And, like I'm not I'm not saying it like I'm I'm not making fun of them. Like I'm I'm laughing with them because I think it's great. <laughs> I just think it sounds funny. Like I don't like you don't have to make fun it of it. It just it just makes me smile. It just makes me laugh. I can't even Right, can't exactly. Like it. It, it puts or it's like when I told you all of like those bad English stories at McDon in the McDonald's drive thru. Yeah. Like it just puts such a big smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just like, yeah, the, the, the Vietnamese and the Indian accents are fucking hilarious. Some yeah. Chinese ones I, are funny. I, re- I really love like the African accents. Yeah. I love like, those. Like, I just love like the spirit of like all those accents. It's so, so nice. When they're angry, it's fucking funny. Like <laughs> I love when African <laughs> people are mad at something and they're ranting. <laughs> it's so fucking hey, funny. I watched this video it was like the the president of Uganda. He was interviewed about like homosexuality. <laughs> oh shit! I think I remember yeah. that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and, and 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 then like the the interviewer, like some British lady, she's like, "Do you personally dislike homosexuals?" And he's like, "Of course, they are disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> he just like goes off. Why are you gay? Right, he's like before. Before the science say that you know, they, they 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 say they born that way, but then the science say they not born that way. So, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Africans, dude, funny as shit. It's great, bro. I am the captain now. I like the Rafiki uh, accent and like yeah. Lion King. Like he know that way. <laughs> dude, the this is the funniest shit with um. I I did. I've been watching a lot of garbage TV, uh, recently. And Ninety Day Fiance is one of them. And oh yeah. It's great, but one of the why movies, because it's fucking funny. I don't even care if it's fake. It's just like, so are you funny. watching it with with Jordan or yeah? Or it's just you're just watching it. That's one. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's that, the thing that's you have different. to watch with somebody. Like if you watch reality TV by yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something wrong with you. But like if you're watching it yeah, with that's, somebody, that's what I was saying. Group, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not. I was watching like, it are you myself. watching this by yourself? Okay, no, okay, okay. But like, there's always people. At least like, there's there's you know there's someone from Southeast Asia, maybe North Africa, but like you are Nigeria. There's like a lot of people from Nigeria. It's Bro. so fucking funny. <laughs> Bro. Uh, <laughs> Dude, the the one recently, there's like this dude. He wants to be a rapper, and he's trying to convince this much older white lady that she like that he loves her, and so she's buying him gifts, and he's very much just taking advantage of her. And like the the, the arguments that they get into is so funny. The last one is his uh his family doesn't like her because she's too old and white. He wants the, his family wants him to marry his cousin <laughs> because she's his age. So they can have grandkids. She, all the family wants are grandkids, and so like uh that she 
the stupid her name is a uh, is a uh, Kim, and she's so like insecure and so brainwashed that like she has accepted to that he's gonna that he can have another wife because he wants kids and so the the idea of him having kids is important to her she wants to make him happy so she's willing to let him have another wife but she wants to be the first wife and the fact that uh-huh. his family won't let her be the first wife she's like oh hell no i'm not gonna be the second wife as bitch so like they're arguing but she's like what does it matter this is for my family you have to like why why, why are you doing this to me <laughs> oh man that is it's great. so fucking funny, dude. I can't. <laughs> I, I wish that. Sh- I hope that shit's real. I, it's probably not, but I, I hope it's real. It's not, but oh, it's so fucking funny. Or wait, uh... do you know like the mystery diners? Have you ever seen that? No, I, I've heard of them. I haven't seen them. I watched like Ralph the Movie Maker's review of it. Oh man, I would like is it is just like. <laughs> it's it's like so obvious that it's fake and also like it's so stupid and like the situations that are in there it's like what like they're like the the, the um there's like a, a a grilled cheese eating contest at this restaurant right like do you know the concept of the show i don't know okay so it's, so it's basically here. like so it's like charles styles who is like the host of the show has um like he and his like team of like mystery diners people they they like go into restaurants to like solve problems like a restaurant be like hey we have this problem and like mystery diners you need to fix it so then they fix it but it's like some of those problems it's like like, kitchen nightmares and bar rescue and shit i guess so i haven't seen those but it's it's the same um Right, but so like so some of the, the the problems that need to be solved, it's like, it's like there's a grilled cheese contest, and it's like someone is cheating. <laughs> Very important. All right, exactly. It's like, why do you need to call in? Like, I need to show you the the, the review. It's so well done. You might like some of it because, like, with Kitchen Nightmares, it's like Gordon Ramsay goes to failing restaurants and he tries to help turn them around. But, like, the majority of them are like these foreign dudes that are so, like, arrogant and so stubborn. So it's like they call for help, but, like, anytime he tries to change something, and then he's like, It's like, you don't know what you're doing. I cook for 20 years. Like, you're bullshit, my friend. Like, it's just, it's so fucking funny uh-huh. that they will not accept any help and they'll just go back to what they were doing anyway. <laughs> Man, <laughs> well, just like thank you for renovating my restaurant. No fuck off. I changed menu back. <laughs> you changed menu back. <laughs> it's yeah, so thank fucking you for, funny. Thank you for yelling at my cook. Yeah, it's just like all these Greeks and like Italians and Spanish people and Muslim. It's fucking funny as shit. Dude, the Italians yeah. are the worst, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Like fuck you. I've been doing this for my my, my fucking grand. Wait, like. Like Italian Americans or like Italian Italians? No, like Italian Americans. Uh, oh, okay. The most oh, stubborn, man. egotistical, I... piece of shit, fucking like <clears throat> it's Italian way, like those type of people. Dude, I watched the the first episode of The Sopranos with my dad. That shit was great. Man, I'm just not into Italian crime shit. It's just when you've seen one, there... you see all of them. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't really. I mean, I guess I'm watching, like, the quote-unquote good ones. Because, like, I'm not watching all of, like, just the useless junk. Like, yeah. the, ah, you know, like, hey, Tony, we're going to Vegas. And he just, like, shoots the guy. <laughs> <and> the, <laughs> but, like, uh, I mean, I was like, seeing The Godfather and, like, Goodfellas. But then the Sopranos is kind of, like, the third piece in that, like, crown, you know? Yeah. Um, but, like, their accents, like, a lot of it, like, I just couldn't help myself. Like, like, like they, they were, like, running down, like, the story. They were, like, at, like, a coffee shop. And then it's, like... Yeah, it was like, you know, two or three of them, you know, Czechoslovakian immigrants or some shit. <laughs> yeah. It's just great. I think the biggest, my biggest, because like I shit on Italians a lot and it's because I hate anybody that's like super arrogant and annoying and I hate their accent. I think Italians fit all three. Um, but I think the biggest crime is like the food just isn't that good. Like there's so many other really? cl- no. Italian food is great. I mean, okay. Man. It's like, like when you really ask yourself, like what different food are you really getting like besides some pasta dish or some pizza or some shit like sure like people might cook it better than one another but like it all tastes like you know what you're getting when you're going to italian place like there's no mystery 
like and like and also like there's not like i, guess I have yet to point, find yeah. like a really like immaculate italian dish like every every piece of shit fucking ghetto ass city in this country claims to have the best pizza or italian place or whatever but just like they're all just like okay <laughs> and it's all called like tony's pizza something like i mean yeah i've, I've tony I, or joe or... i think i'm just tired of like pizza and like spaghetti and lasagna and all this other shit and it was like, oh yeah, there's all these different pastas. Like it's still pasta, it's just cut in a different fucking shape. Stop being pretentious. Then you might have a d- red sauce or white sauce. Pick one. Like, God. it's just it's average yeah, to I mean, me. It's okay. Like know. you can give me the best cooked Italian dish, it'll be okay. But like you give me like something like Mediterranean, like a sub, though. a subpar Mediterranean dish will blow any high Italian dish out of the water. Italian, Italian. is Mediterranean though. I meant okay. I meant like, let me be more specific, like Greek, you mean like or, Greek or or okay. Lebanese or shit like that, or Af or Afghan isn't Mediterranean, oh, but okay. like that that's sort of fun, shit. Fun. More, more of that inspired than just straight Italian, because like obviously like med- like it just depends on what you're getting in different regions. But like the stereotypical, like like if you go to any smaller Italian place, dude, I need to take you to the Italian restaurants in New Orleans. I've had fine dining, like I've had great Italian food, quote unquote. It's just it, it. There's only my problem is like it, it can only taste so good. It's fucking noodles and sauce, and cheese. I mean, yeah, like, I don't, I don't blame. I don't you. know, but it all tastes like Italian food. Is my point. <laughs> it doesn't taste different from one another. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, say, I though, just I, I like say, I when I went to Italy, the food was fucking phenomenal. So I'm I'm only speaking about American inspired Italian food, not like Italian Italian. Oh, food. I see, I see. Oh yeah, so, like, like if you have a Rome flat, if you go to Venice, world, even, but... even if it's like a tourist spot in like Venice, like you have a flatbread, it'll just taste fresher and like it'll be different than what you've had in America. It's just a fact. Oh yeah, I had this pizza in Rome where it was like, Margarita. like it's it. it, it, it it's like this whole big pizza, and like he just asks you like he like he's like how much do you want, and he just cuts off how much ever want you want in like a rectangle, right? Yeah. And so then, and then he just weighs it, and then he and like the the amount is determined by how much the pizza weighs. I oh man, I had this like this, I don't even know. It was like this kind of like chili pizza with like beef on it. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but we even... I. I Sorry, go ahead. Well, what I like about like the Italian American food is like I just I like its connection to like home life and family and like eating together. It's fucking every cu- it's every culture that no, has but a connection like, it's, to it, home life with food that's synonymous with everyone's culture. No, no, but like Italian like emphasis like Italians like really emphasize that and like that's why like they don't shut up about family because they're like family is the most important thing. So do Spanish people. Like, Spanish people fam- do the same it's shit. It's a family. Well, yeah, I mean, they're both Mediterranean Catholic people, but also, like, it reminds me of that. And I just, I like how it, Italian culture is, like, really Catholic as well. And I just like, so I mean, Spanish a lot of people, you know, people, like, what the fuck, like, Spanish people are big about family, well, right, food, but and I culture, mean, and the food is way better than Italian food. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, it's, like, Spanish food is different than Italian food, though. That's my point. It's like, what my, you, what I'm saying is, like, every fucking culture is, their food is important and their family is important. And it's like reflected in that. That's what I'm saying. The Spanish shit is the same thing as the Italian stuff, but the food is way better. Yeah, but the Italians like just they really emphasize the family. <laughs> they all do. That's my point. No, but the Italians like overemphasize it almost. That's because they're just an exaggeratory people, or just fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sounding racist, but <laughs> against Italians, really. Well, yeah, racist towards anyone is bad. It's not a fucking race. <laughs> well, y- you know what I mean. You're so stereotyping. Yeah, no shit. I'm stereotyping. Who gives a fuck? They're Italians. They're so an ethnicity. Stereotype. No one's gonna give a shit about you stereotyping Italians. Who cares? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, you can't just say that because it's like if you stereotype like black people, then you'd like that's bad. I mean, I'll yes, stereotype I agree, anybody. Bad, I then... just know what not to say in public and on camera. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like. <laughs> well what i don't understand is like how does south park like never get canceled they've been canceled a couple times i i don't i don't but, like not like to the extent that like uh, like, the, like it's not as easy and also like they've only been canceled when it's like you know like the the extreme you know like, like, like depicting muhammad or something like that well i mean there's people that it, it just depends on the connections that they have but i guess because in south park case a lot of it's ironic like the creators have never gone on like a 
like a rant you know what i mean like a mel gibson rant or anything like that like they have highly offensive content but it's also aimed at everybody so like they're not like picking on a particular group of people they're everybody's getting it but yeah in terms of like all the offensive content like if you ask most people that agree with that sort of um progressive agenda most people like would not want south park to be on the air but i think it's different than like a celebrity saying something that he shouldn't have because he's not joking i don't know yeah. I, I, I celebrities don't most of them can like shut the hell up anyways so. yeah because <laughs> i'm like dude i'm literally paying you to act in a movie and get like i'm like just I really don't care what your, like, opinions or whatever are in life. Like, I have the whole Ricky Gervais sentiment with, like, all those people. Yeah. It gives a shit. Like, I just, I loved how that guy just shit on all those people. Like, you guys know nothing about the real world. Just take your stupid trophy that, like, is just so meaningless. And, like, just, 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 like, just take, accept your trophy, say thanks, and, like, bye. Like, you really don't need to make this big whole like ordeal and like you know like you, you guys have like no perspective of like anything that's different though because most celebrities don't give a shit like they're just they're just moderates like they'll go with whatever the popular narrative is just like politicians just so they can like be as yeah, like a- reachable of an have as reachable of an audience and cast as wide of a net so it's like they don't actually believe in anything they just fucking go with whatever the flow is but but that's why like- but then a lot of them are still like aggressively whatever they're saying like yeah, and they won't shut up about it. Yeah, because that's part of their like they're it's like it's it's like it's all advertising. So it's like the the celebrity that's going to scream the loudest about climate change or feminism is going to be obviously it's it's disingenuous and they don't actually believe it. Or how much they hate the Jews? <laughs> sure, how much they hate Jews. So, but if they scream it the loudest and it makes it seem like they're they really 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 care. I don't know. I mean, obviously, most people can just look at that and be like, "You're just shilling out for whatever the fuck. Who cares?" But I don't know. I think in South Park's case, because I just think that they they were already established in a time where it was kind of acceptable. Obviously, there's stuff that they weren't allowed to do and say on TV, and they pushed the limits. And they, like I said, they got canceled a couple of times. They pissed off celebrities that would refru- like refuse to do movies if Comedy Central didn't pull an episode. Like they've been through shit like that. Um, like what other stuff? I I mean, obviously, I know the Muhammad thing was like. The biz, the biggest example, but like, what other stuff did they do? Scientology was a big one. They they ripped on Scientology a lot enough to the point where the some like high ups in the church were like trying to do like background evidence um, or background research on them to dig up dirt to use as a smear campaign, but they couldn't find anything. When they made fun of Tom Cruise, um, they pulled that episode. They they basically they they said that Tom Cruise was gay and that he's hiding in the closet. And they made fun of Scientology and that they, they made fun of everybody. It was like, that was the Muhammad thing too. They made fun of Buddha they made fun of Jesus. Like every major religion they made fun of. That was kind of the theme of the episode. Also with like a bunch of celebrities and Tom Cruise like was going to pull out of a movie if the, whatever network that um, Comedy Central is associated with didn't pull the episode. So stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah. A couple others got pissed off too. the The black guy chef Isaac Hayes he quit because he was a Scientologist and they kept ripping on it. <laughs> so I yeah, Tom Cruise is a Scientologist too, right? Yeah, that's that's why he got pissed. Also because they called yeah. him gay too, but everyone calls Tom Cruise gay. Family Guy did that for years too before South Park did. Yeah. Well, everyone calls a, a lot of people gay. So. Yeah. So, but I yeah I, I think it's the fact that like they. Family Guy has kind of changed their notion. Like, Seth MacFarlane is more left-leaning, so, like, he's kind of dialed, like, back some of the offensive shit, and, like, he, he like he puts more... Is it really? I thought, yeah. it, I thought he... I mean, I, I know he wasn't right, but I kind of thought he was... He was pretty much, like, center in the sense that, like... No, he's, like, the, donated like money to, like, Democratic campaigns. Like, he's, like... I think he's oh, like registered okay. a Democrat, yeah. which is whatever, but... Oh, okay. God. What I'm saying is, like, the newer... Like, the, he also hasn't been in the right actually not a thing about it he hasn't been in the writing room for like 10 years i think he just does the voices so i don't even think he writes for the show anymore so that might be the other reason but i think he's always been more left Yeah, because like i was gonna say like it's like some of the stuff and like the the episodes like i mean it's it's not like like it, it it seems like stuff that like you know would come from like a south park kind of thing or like yeah. you know like when there was that, that whole episode when like he's like uh, when, like um peter's like a- accused of like shooting cleveland jr and then when he realized, like, when then Cleveland just comes out and he's like, 
I shot uh, Cleveland Jr. Like no one gives a shit because it's like a black person shooting another black person. Yeah. So then I was yeah. really shocked and when I like, saw that. <laughs> I was like, wow. Right. So then I'm like, wait, did Seth MacFarlane? Right. Because then I, from that, I assumed I was like, oh, then I guess he's like a centrist or something or like. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he hasn't uh, written for Family Guy in a while. and It's kind of gone downhill because of that. But yeah, I know he's more left leaning. But point is like they've dialed back their like offensive tone with South Park. I think South Park kind of has too. Like they 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 don't really use too many cheap shots anymore like they used to. So I think True. I don't know. I mean I think it's just the changing with the times a little bit. But South Park has always been controversial and trying to get it canceled right. and all that. But I think it's just because there's more people that understand that their stuff is ironic and it's not meant to be taken seriously. Even that doesn't matter because people will just try to cancel it anyway because they don't like it or they just, right. they're too offended by it. But I think for them, right. like they're just been established as that since day one. So it's harder to get them off the air because you know what you get, you know what you're expecting. You're not surprised when you see something offensive right. on South park. They just have been able to sneak by and not really get in too much hot water, I guess. Seth MacFarlane is a huge ego. I feel like most people do at that level. Like it's just it's hard to not have one if you're that successful. I mean, I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, like, well, I mean, because he is like he he can do a lot of things. I think like, he's he, really talented. He, like, yes, I, he is. Like he's a he's, a, he's a jack of all trades. Yeah, he can he can write. He can like he can direct things. He can act. He can Sing. I mean he's he can write too. music. Yeah, yeah, he can write music, he can dance. Like he he's a really he's like he's a good entertainer. Let me rephrase. But, Seth MacFarlane has written a lot of really bad shit. Like I still think Ted is not a good movie and A Million Ways to Die in the never West. Never seen it. It's it's not great. And A Million Ways Oh, to Die, I heard that movie is terrible. That movie's fucking awful. So like his movies are garbage, but the I, honestly, I think his best work is The Orville. That's a wonderful show. That's probably the best work he's written since Family Guy. Oh, did you know that he wrote Johnny Bravo? too yeah for a little bit i, I think i think that was yeah. like the first project he worked on was johnny bravo yeah, i don't know if yeah um but yeah like, um the 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 orville is like that star trek parody yeah right? but that's the thing like it started off as like a parody but it got more serious as the seasons progressed and it's actually like a really good show and people are saying that it's like oh, it's okay. better than the new star trek and like I, i've watched all the seasons it's a really fucking good show he throws a, but the other thing too like he throws a lot of like um political stuff in there like he'd They'll talk about like men and women, and then he'll have like trans stuff in there too, because that's just his, you know, his politics. But he writes it in a very, very good way. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the entire like seasons of them. It's actually really fucking funny. Like it's, it's very well written, and I think that's why it went from just being like a parody of Star Trek to like a legitimately good sci-fi show. That's that's always cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's his besides fam because like American Dad is cool. I don't like the Cleveland show. I think it's fucking oh, stupid. Oh, he's already... Oh, yeah, I forgot. He had the... American Dad is like, eh. I don't yeah, know. but Family Guy is... And the Orville is probably the best things that he's written. Is American Dad... That's Joe, right? Or that's... It's it's different. What do you mean? Where, like, the Cleveland show is, like, Cleveland, and then... No, is the, American Dad about Joe, or is it no, completely American, different? American Dad's not a spinoff of Family Guy. It's a totally different show. Right, okay. I thought it was, like, a spinoff. But no, no, it's not. It's not the same characters at all. Right. Um, yeah, American Dad's like whatever. Yeah, it's more of a show you kind of put in the background while you're doing something. Um, I mean, Family Guy kind of is too, but I think it's just it's Family, family Guy has some good stuff though. Older Family Guy is a lot funnier than the. It's got some Irish good show. stuff. I just like, like the how the South Park guys yeah. fucking hate Seth MacFarlane so much they just rip on the shit. Have you seen the Family Guy episodes? Yes. I've seen. Oh, you mean like the South Park episodes? Yeah, make about it Family of, Guy. Yeah. yeah, where it's like the. Oh, like, what are you guys doing? Oh, I watch the Family Guy. You watch Family Guy? Yeah, it's a good show. Lots of people like watch Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, and they're all like, yeah, yeah, it's a good show. It's a good show. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny, you know. <laughs> the premise that all the Family Guy jokes were written by manatees randomly pushing a ball yes! into a tank. Like this shit was fucking. That scene, literally, hill like it. Just, it absolutely killed Family Guy. And what's really funny, because like I like, oh, it's so genius that 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 whole con that concept was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because like I like Seth MacFarlane. I think he has a lot of great points on things, but I also think he has a lot of 
weird oh, yeah. takes on shit and like he does a lot of cringy stuff but the thing that was really funny to me was like i think the south park guys are just superior writers in the way that they're able to come up with concepts and you could tell yes, that really definitely. fucking got to him because like i was watching a couple of interviews of, he was on howard stern and he was on a couple others and they were talking about the feud and shit and he's always he has an attitude where it's like he's kind of smiling through it but you know he's irritated as fuck oh yeah oh it was so funny um yeah, because I mean, he's like, you can say what you want about me, but don't go after my writers. Like he just was kind of, kind of high roading it a little bit, but you could tell right. he's irritated as fuck. He's like, no, I'm not gonna retaliate. Like it's, you know, I've I've talked shit about so many people. It'd be hypocritical for me to, you know, say something about this. So like, you just know that he's fucking just, he's mad and he can't do anything about it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, because it proves that the South Park people are right that he he's not a good writer. Yeah, which is which is really they, annoying because he is a good writer, but he just makes a lot of stupid shit with him and his good writing well okay he 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 can be a good writer yeah like, he, has he has the potential writer. but he just like i said like he does write good shit but he just also adds a lot of really stupid fucking filler yeah like all like the cutaway stuff i'm like why does that need to be like some of it's there? Fun, but again like i said like he like, it's been a while since he's written the majority of it's so, like all the like semi newer stuff wasn't even him okay true but um right but, but I mean, he still created the show. Yeah, like I said, but the but the Orville is recently, so like I don't know if he's having a more serious undertone these days. But that's a that's his like I think it's his best writing. Yeah, that's good. Um, what was I saying? But yeah, no, I just that just thought it was funny. That really fucking got to him. Yeah, but I would love to see him write a dissing family, like sorry, dissing South Park episode. I don't know what because like his entire point was like it, I can't like. It, it's like from the con like from the idea that he's mad and wants to like get revenge not just like we're animators that do satire so it's another jab friendly back right at you kind of thing like he didn't see it that way but he also said like i don't have the time to do it because south park made like a two episode mini series about it and he was like i guess he thought he had to do the same i don't know but as far as i yeah, I, I don't know that's a good point. i don't know why he he did, he thought that he couldn't do a jab back without making it seem like he was irritated or that it got to him like he totally could have just done cuz i don't know yeah and i love like when when like like carbon is like the allegory for like south park and it's like what Carmen, you should like Family Guy. Like it, it, it fa Family Guy is, is the humor. Like y'all, y'all's humor is like really similar. And he's like, no, how dare you compare me to Family Guy? <laughs> yeah, it's just funny as fuck. Yeah. Oh man, but um, but yeah, I I don't know, man. As far as like the ego shit goes, that's just how it goes when you gain success at that level. Even the people that try to be actively humble and fight against it, like it's just it's hard. But I think the Family Guy memes are great. They're kind of getting played out, though. Like, I don't know. I just, I've, I've kind of moved past them. Everybody, like, especially, like, all the reactions to them and all that shit. Like, I just feel like it's just overdone. It just needs to be something There's, different. I still think they're hilarious. <laughs> like, some random, you know, like, the one where, like, Peter's face is, like, put on, like, Garfield's body and says, like, hey, liberals, if global warming is real, how come it hurts when I pee? That's just a <laughs> shit post. It's not even a Family Guy. Meme. Yeah, but no, but you still, it's still like related, and I like how it's all like, it 19, has like all of those. <laughs> I am not nineteen or twenty, whatever the fuck. You can't drink. It's still yet. funny. No shit, you can't drink. Well, <laughs> I have drank, so <laughs> that's why you're stupid. You drank too much. Yeah. <laughs> And smoke too much weed. And smoke too that much makes, weed. That makes you really stupid. Have you done uh, shrooms yet? Nope. <laughs> You're not in the psychedelic state of mind? DMT, bro? No. Are you even DMT, bro? Oh, no, no, no. That's like... Uh, that is like different dimensions and stuff like that. Yeah, that's like hallucinating, bro. <laughs> yeah, like I remember... Um, my friend told me that he heard this guy tell his story about how like he did it and then he spent like what literally felt like 30 years in like another life and he had like a completely different wife and children and like raised completely different children. That's a super extreme case. Most of the time it's like if you take DMT it's like less than 20 minutes. If you take acid or if you take a shit ton of acid no, it might be a couple but, like, hours. But... No, but I mean that's what it feels feels like though I not know. necessarily what it actually lasts like no no, no. Yeah, I'm, I, what i'm saying is like the people's like warped slowdown of time that's a very extreme case i think 
Yeah. Like, not that many people experience, like, I mean, obviously the time slows down, but, like, where you feel like you've spent 30 years, like, that's pretty extreme. Oh, well, yeah, but, I mean, I guess he might have just been hop- hyperbolic. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not into um, psychedelics or weed in general. All that shit just makes me have a panic attack. Like, I can't stand losing control of my autonomy. I can't do it. No, but, like, the, the psychedelics, I mean, like, they seem interesting, but I'm just, I hate the culture. Oh, yeah, the culture's really and fucking like, annoying. And, like, oh, like, I hate those kind of people. Yeah, especially the I ones... I shouldn't hate people, but, you know... No, nah, it's great. Sometimes it's good to, like, put people <laughs> in their place because they know that they're fucking cringy. But it's just, they're like... cringy, pretentious, think that they're, like, so much better than everyone else. Dude, the, they s- the spiritual... They look down s- upon other people. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, they, they, they think they have spirituality, but they uh, don't. Dude, the spiritual like, stoners are the fucking worst. Or, like, the people that, like... They're like, dude, the government's controlling us. Like, no shit, you're fucking, like, 80 years too late. Like, God... Right, or, or or it's like religion is like bad, man. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so is Buddhism bad? But like, I'm like, okay, no. So then you can't just say religion is bad. It's like when you say religion is bad, just admit that what you mean is Judeo Christianity is bad. The control. Like once you, you admit man, that, go shave your right. head and talk about chakras. Got to exactly, and you, you got to wear orange robes. Four hundred thirty-two hertz to be in tune with the spin of the earth. Or like the the mantra, like the own. Yeah, that's sh- fucking god, dude. People are so annoying with that shit. Like I, I would, I know, like the psychedelics are becoming more mainstream, especially with microdosing, because I think psilocybin. There's finding that it helps people with PTSD and depression without having to be like codependent on an antidepressant or some mood stabilizer. Or that's yeah, thing. that that's good. That's good. So yeah. like I said, if they actually had a purpose, but there's just the fact of like losing my consciousness a little bit freaks me out. Like I I'm uncomfortable when I dream sometimes. Like I hate like not being able to control shit. Yeah. Cause like from what I've heard, like they almost feel like it's, it's like the dream world where it's like that loose kind of like broad, like horizon kind of, paradise feeling but it's like completely expanded into like complete reality yeah and it sucks because like i like like stories i like surrealism i like being able like if i was able to be calm and experiencing all these weird colors and all these different beings and just becoming one with time like that shit sounds cool to me but just the real world it is cool, physical no. implications just scare me too much to even think about doing it oh yeah like i love like the connections that people draw to like the original you know, like world religions and stuff like that. With that, I think that that's really cool. That does not in any way like undermine my like religious beliefs because I think it almost even helps it. If you but, think about um, it, like back in that day, almost everybody were unknowingly taking some sort of like herbal psychedelic. Right. So that's that's cool to think about. So you never um, know. Like that's that's why I was saying most like religions, like when you like compare them, they always have an origin story about a flood. Or, like, not in the case of Christianity, but, like, aliens coming down. But then you can also mistake that for being angels. So, it's like, there's a lot of similarities. So, you always have to wonder, like, what people were taking back then when they were thinking about this kind of shit. Right, but that that proves to me that I'm just, like, since we all do, like, we can see all these connections. Like, we all worship something. Like, there has to be something, you know? Or, like, the, um, what is it? Like, the, um, like you're saying, like, every religion it's like a it's it, you know it's, it's like it has an origin story with all this stuff or like you know the trifold path like the trifold path in buddhism looks so similar to the ten commandments in 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 judeo-christianity yeah. i think that's it's the, like there, there has to be something yeah yeah i mean that's like they're all loosely connected and i th- and i think specifically with dmt because a lot of people they always have very similar encounters and they describe very similar beings, which is crazy. If that, if that is like an actual like hallucination and it's like something that your brain is controlling, like why do so many different people have very similar experiences with this like specific or psychoactive? So there's like a team in London. I think they're researching like if this is going to be an abstract concept or if this is like concrete and physical, like are we tapping into a conscious network or is it just your, you know, your mind showing you illusions on a hype? Cause like, I think DMT is like a natural chemical in your brain that just gets. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, like yeah, because we do produce it naturally. I think DMT is like that, that kind of chemical that like makes us 
like that that we produce naturally that like yeah. it, it it gives us those feeling like those dreamy kind of feelings yeah and it's, i don't know if i'm it's pretty the sure same, that's what it is yeah i don't know if it's the same chemical that like is associated with dream but i think like before you die like you're that part of your pineal gland and your brain just like accentuates so that's why some people say like they have their life flash before their eyes that's kind of where that comes from um yeah that's what i got joe Joe rogan talked about that how like you realize like how vulnerable you are yeah so i think like because ayahuasca is like um dmt mixed with other like herbal shit to like counteract the high or make it very specific and not as tame as you smoking it um but then also like psilocybin is another one but i don't know if that unlocks dmt in your brain or if it's just another type of psychoactive chemical but i i don't know but the the point yeah. is like everybody is having very similar experiences to the, be just like an illusionary coincidence. So like if it actually is tapping into some sort of you know consciousness network from some other dimension or some other universe, whatever have you, you know that might have some prevalence. Like if it actually has a purpose, because I've been always interested in trying to you know be expanding you know my conscious plane or just tapping into a higher network. If it's actually the case. So like if it actually proves to have a purpose and not just be like your your mind playing tricks on you, then you know I might consider it. But I just I don't know. There's I just I have way too much anxiety to fucking you know go through that. Right. I mean, obviously that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Like my brain is not um, stable for it. Like you have to be grounded. I'm not grounded enough to go on a fucking illusionary trip. <laughs> All right. That's why like Joe Rogan. I mean, obviously like no, I'm not gonna like. I, I'm not going to do the stuff that he tells me to do because I'm like, that that's crazy. But he's he's still like, I can give him credit because he's like, he's like, don't do this when you're like a teenager or like, like do this like when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> you know? If you're going to die anyway, um, fuck it. Might as well enjoy it. Right. Because he's like, do this when you're older and like you're wiser. You know? Yeah. Like, but, so I give him credit in that sense. But I'm too yeah. nervous to fucking like go into surgery and like, you know, like where they, especially like during the dentist where they give you those drugs that make you say all that wild shit. Yeah, oh I, my I, God, I know what you're dude, I could do it. I'd be able, like, I would tell people like, do not let anybody film me. I'm sorry for what I might potentially would say because I can't even imagine if I just let my brain loose. That's why like I don't get like super drunk because like I just fucking I'm a loose cannon. I'll just let go and say whatever the fuck comes to my yeah. brain. And that's why like I'm glad that like getting high makes me paranoid because like I would just fucking I would just let loose. Right, but I mean, uh, <laughs> right. But, like, when people talk about, you know, like, Joe Rogan and, like, they, they talk about, like, the, the experiences and, like, the beings they, like, encounter when they take these certain drugs. I mean, like, it proves to me that, you know, like, demons do exist. You know, like, they, like, when he encounters all of, like, these, like, hooded figures and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, some people, um, when they have I mean, a bad... they're e- real. Yeah, yeah, they have a bad demons experience. Are real. Like, the sleep paralysis <laughs> demons are, like you know, like really negative, like uncomfortable feeling beings from whatever dimension that people like, like I said, if you don't, if you're not grounded enough, you'll have a bad experience. So it's like you're unlocking demons from another dimension or whatever the fuck. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I, I'm more content with just trying to, you know, get that sort of feeling with music and trance out and try to elevate my, my mind and my body. Oh yeah. I'm like, you can get it in a much better and healthier way than yeah than drugs and stuff like that for me I, I like losing control in the sense where it's like i i can switch back <laughs> off in an instant like the fact that like oh fuck i'm yeah. in this now and it's gonna take me an hour a couple hours to like ride this down that freaks me out but like if i'm like zoning out or disassociating <laughs> or just like tr- like i can i can let myself let go and calm down because i know i can snap right into it immediately if i needed to yeah it's like you want to lose control without losing control yeah that's pretty much because you have to you can't be fucking rigid and you know, peering over your shoulder all the goddamn time. Fucking, it's not good for your heart. <laughs> yeah, just being, like, I have anxiety yeah. and, like, ugh, like, unsure of, like, everything. Yeah, yeah. that's why I like going to the sauna, because you just fucking let loose. Like, it's a very intense environment, and, like, if you just succumb yourself and just let the heat take you and you just lose control, like, you won't even feel like you're dying in a sauna. It's just you're, you're sweating out all this negative bullshit, and then you're able to snap mm, yeah. right back into normal conditions. So that's kind of, like... Like putting your body yeah. and your mind through yes. a through a difficult concept, and then being able to just you know fight or flight, and then you exit it a better person. But you get to do it on your own terms. Yeah, that's kind of like my take on the Latin Mass. Like when you're, um, like when when you just like let go and you just like are taken by like the the Gregorian chant and like the priest and the incense, 
and like the Latin in like you know like it's it's in a language like you don't even understand. It's just like you and you just roll with it, right? And you come and you come out and you're just like ah that was that was I don't know if you got like a similar feeling. I don't, and that's um, I mean that's just what it is. Like this is how I've always been. Like I don't get that sort of feeling with like sermons or mass. I've always gotten that feeling like um, interacting with other people or having a dialogue about it or like I said going on like mission trips and shit. I couldn't I don't know it, just, it didn't have any reverence for me. But well, not necessarily in that sense, but like in the sauna lifted sense. No, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I never had that. Feeling. Either way. Yeah. Okay. For any like I've been like I've been to multiple different services and just going up with it like just naturally just does not have a elevated effect for me. Yeah. Have you ever been to like an Eastern like Orthodox Christian service? Mm, no, I haven't. That stuff is like like if you if you like the Latin mass, that stuff, it it's so reverent and so like. Like it has like all of like the mysticism and the aura, like everything that I like about you know like the like tool music and all that kind of those minor keys yeah. and like that stuff. It's it's so awesome. Yeah, if it's something I can just zone out to and just like get in with the chanting and just having that sort of ritualistic sort of mindset, like I could get into it and not give a fuck about what's being said. Just getting into the atmosphere of the entire thing, I could do that. But if I have to just sit yeah, there like, and um, listen, to, I can't just sit there and listen to somebody talk. I think that's my problem. Well, right, but that's why I, I like the. I mean, you still have that in mass with the homily, but like most of like the the liturgy in the in the Latin, like it's just it's it's all sung and like in something that like you like we don't understand. Well, at least I mean, I, at like most people, yeah. Um, and, and and like it's just like the music and like the. I mean, I know the the mass I took you to, the choir wasn't the best, but I I wanted to take you to this one that they had in DC, which they don't do it anymore, unfortunately. And that's a long story. I'll save that for another podcast, but the choir there, they had like this huge line of like these really deep bass voices. And it was so perfect for like the Gregorian chant, right. just like the, it was just great. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can get into shit like that. I think, um, the one thing that I did yeah. enjoy about, cause like I'd always just would zone out, and not even listen to what was being said. But it, it, every time I was in a church or like been to a service, it it was always a reflective experience that I always would think back on like all the mistakes that I've made or the stuff that I wanted to improve. Or if I was interested in something, I was really like thinking about it deeply or like creatively, like the stuff that I wanted to get into. So I, I always had a reflection time when I went to church. And it was also because most people didn't talk to you they were just paying attention to what was going on it was perfect for i could just sit there and be and i have to worry about you know actually paying attention to somebody if that makes sense to when they're talking i guess yeah <laughs> so that that was more of what i it was useful for me it was just a time of reflection which is what most people do anyway when they pray but i just did it the whole yeah, entire that's time still right i mean like yeah exactly like you, I'll, like you still get that yeah which is like i obviously would appreciate that but i'm just like it doesn't have all of the stuff I mentioned with like the Latin stuff, like the Latin, like I, just, I can't do without it. It's so cool. Yeah. And like I said, like with those like deep bass notes and then you get that guy who has like a, has like a higher pitch voice, like just like the, the <laughs> like it's, it's so good with the, it's great. Yeah. That hearing it's that shit so live, great. I, I would enjoy that because that just the physical yeah. sound of it. I fucking love. Right. Like you have that and then you have like the ambient, like, voice of the priest going like you know like in nomine patri that feel you at this but it's so i'm just like like even joe rogan gives credit to catholicism in that respect where he's like he's like dude they definitely laced those incense things with like like some kind of drug and they, <laughs> those people are all and i'm like okay i didn't think they were doing that but like he's like yeah like they had they were all getting into like you know the catholic vibe yeah. and that and the you know, atmosphere <laughs> yeah what's burning in that little bronze lamp for real <laughs> Right. Eh, incense, but no, I don't even know what incense is. It's, like, actually, it's just like a fucking I don't know. I mean, some I know sort it, of plant that it they was, dried and it just gives right. off a very particular smoke and smell. Hey, dude, dude, weed is like just a plant, bro. It doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be illegal, bro. Dude, I actually hate the smell of incense. I don't hate it, but like, it just it just is very like uh, it's very blanketing and like just threatening to me. I just, it's very like, mm. I don't enjoy it, but I don't hate it either. My sister burned some in the house. I thought it smelled great. It may be like different kinds, like just like the natural general smell of incense. I don't <laughs> like, it's just very, dude, I don't know. Dude, imagine smoking incense. Oh, <laughs> like, what? fucking blow cock hard. Just, what would that oh, do? Like, I'm sure it'd make you throw up. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. I'm sure. I have no idea what it would do. You know what? We, I'm gonna go look on YouTube because I'm sure there's some dumbass that fucking smokes. <laughs> there's it. G- yes, there has to be some retarded person who's like, let me smoke incense. And Just like the dude that it. fucking vaped the Reaper pepper and then snorted the, <laughs> the fucking powder. You ever oh seen that yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's or some... like, have you seen the guy who he took like eight scoops of pre workout? Oh, yeah. Or like with Steve-O snorting the fucking wasabi and then throwing up instantly. <laughs> oh, shit. Wasabi, dude. That sucks. You ever eat too much wasabi, you feel like you're going to fucking die. It's not because it's... Like, haven't... Wait, why? Because, like, it's... I mean, obviously wasabi is spicy, but it's, like, a whole other spicy. Like, if you eat, like... It's, like... I can't even describe it. It, like, takes over your whole entire fucking, like, inner body. And it's, like, you can't breathe. It's, like a super very sharp wave of spice but it like oh, literally my covers everything oh it's fucking it's brutal but it doesn't last that long oh is that similar to horseradish because i hate horseradish no horseradish is just bitter um oh no but like that that activates like this weird thing in my nose i'm like oh kind of but imagine that feeling in your nose but it's all in your mouth and you can't breathe uh, that's yeah, I don't want to eat wasabi. Yeah, I, I like the taste of wasabi. Like I said, the spice of wasabi, it does not, it's not a long burner. It doesn't last that long. But like, dude, for like a couple seconds, it fucking hits you like really hard. Uh, it like, That's like the most wasabi someone has ever eaten in like one. I don't know, but someone dared me to eat a spoonful once. And oh, uh, that was the fucking, I, I, I was amazed because I, I have a weak stomach. I was amazed I didn't fucking throw up. But like I was dying for at least like a good. Well, you did it. Yeah. Ooh, oh, but dude. did they give you any, did they like pay you to do it or no? No, I was just being dumb and bored. What? <laughs> I wouldn't, I, I would like need money for that. Dude, I used to, I, I was very different in high school than what I was right now. Like if somebody dared me to do something, I'm like, fuck it, dude, I'll do it. I don't care. Just to prove that yeah. I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember it was like, it was like the diary of a wimpy kid when he's like, yep, never take a bet that is totally not worth it. And then it shows like. The bully has like an ice cream cone like on top of his head, hasn't turned around yet, and then Greg is like over by his friends going, "Okay, guys, you owe me twenty five cents." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Darren. I haven't read that shit in forever. Though, yeah. have you have you read any of the fan fictions? No. What the? Why the fuck would I read oh, Diary of a Wimpy no, Kid fan fiction? They are hilarious. Like the uh, Greg goes to Vietnam. <laughs> it's so good or like the one where like greg is like he's like 30 years old and has like this existential crisis (laughs) actually this sounds amazing i I should get into it oh no it's great or like manny is at like the nuremberg trials (laughs) and then he's like i'm on we (laughs) tweet and like that was his justification for it that sounds pretty me. Yeah, I, I'm actually, you know what? I might have to check that out. That's fucking stupid. Oh yeah, it's a it's a great <sighs> uh, rabbit hole to get into of Diary of Wimpy Kid fan fictions. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm just amazed that the majority of it isn't fucking sexual. Um, some of it is, but not the. I don't think like the majority. <laughs> I mean, no, but like the one about like Greg having the existential crisis was like really hit me. I mean, it, it's it was well written. Oh, I'm sure, man. I'm getting there. I'm fucking getting there. But, um, yeah, because I mean, because like he wanted to work, he worked for like a comic thing because he was doing like Zooey Mama with Rowley as like they were prof- like they were doing it as their job. Right. And then um, they both applied to this company or this vi- the video game company or whatever in Boston that like developed the Twisted Wizard video games that they liked. <laughs> and then Rowley got the offer and he didn't. So he's like, oh, great. So then, like, he, he, like, he doesn't know what to do, so then he just, like, gets a job with, I think, like, like some other random kid that he used to go to school with, and he has, like, no friends, and he realizes, like, how much of, like, a horrible person he is. Because, like, he is a terrible person. Yeah. Dude, fucking... <laughs> I... I just think it's funny. Like, I wish they had those, like, as a kid. Like, as opposed to him being in the same fucking grade every year. It's just him, like, being an adult and hating life even more than he did as a kid. Oh, I would I, I would love her. to have that. Yeah. yeah, and then it's really... It has some really nice things. Like, you know, like, he and his brother have, like, a... You know, their relationship is fleshed out, you know? Yeah. Like, um... Because Roderick, actually, he turns out pretty well. Like, he... 
he gets married and he has, he has, he has like a happy family and everything. And then Greg is, you know, like he's, he doesn't know what he's doing and stuff like that. And then he sees Greg with like his happy family and he gets jealous, you know? Yeah. And then Manny is like, he becomes like a complete like nihilist. <laughs> Dude, the, the funny shit is uh people keep... Because, like, he keeps making these fucking books. Like, people keep tweeting at Jeff Kinney on Twitter. Um, and then they were like... Oh, he doesn't... Like, en- when are you going to stop making-, making them? Huh? He's in, like, a... He's in a contract. Like, he doesn't enjoy making them anymore. Well, that's what that's what's funny. So, people are like, when are you going to let this kid fucking get out of your prison of being prematurely in middle school? Like, when are you going to stop making these? He's like, this is all right. I know how to do. <laughs> yeah, it proves he's one-dimensional. Yeah. But oh well, it's my fucking childhood. I'll give him a pass. Yeah, they're yeah. they're funny boys. <laughs> as far as uh, challenges that I would do, um, I did the cinnamon challenge, which fucking sucked. Dude. I was like gagging for twenty minutes, and someone did pay me twenty dollars. Wait, no, they didn't pay me twenty dollars. They said they would give me twenty dollars if I could swallow it, and I couldn't fucking do it. So, the money enticed oh, me, but I couldn't fucking do that shit. I did. The one actually Man. that sucked the worst was the fucking ice and salt one. That one was awful. What's wrong about that? Like you take just... a you take a handful of uh, of um, salt and you grip an ice cube, and like you're supposed to grip it for like two to five minutes, somewhere around there. And if you can do it in that time, because like it's like a it makes a chemical reaction, and it like burns the fuck out of your hand. Oh, I see. Oh, that's okay. awful. I thought you meant like ice and salt in your mouth. I don't know how it would be in your mouth. Like if you just hold it on your tongue, that probably would suck too. Like you'd be a big ass canker sores, but like, yeah, you grip it in your hand, like as tight as you can. Oh dude, it fucking burns so bad. I see. Hmm. Yeah. Did a Interesting. Bunch of dumb shit like that. I never did like the, where people would like at lunch, they would just take like a bunch of gross shit and like mash them together in a drink and then make, oh, you drink it. fuck that. I, I hated that. that. Yeah. But, um, I'm a reformed man these days. A reformed Jew. A reformed Jew these days. I complain about everything and don't want to do anything. Right. <laughs> I, I asked my sister, I was like, hey, does reformed Judaism have like a, a chief rabbi? And she was like, I don't know. And I go, I bet she's a woman. And she looks it up and she goes, yep, she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a reformed Jew with the woman rabbi. God. The the ones that were culturally Jewish, just not spiritually. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but like, I mean, ancestrally, I guess, like yeah. culturally, not even really, because like, um, there's Jews in New Orleans, like they do crawfish boils, <laughs> not the gefilte fish boils. Wait, what? Not gefilte fish boils. Yeah, but but you see what I'm saying though. Yeah, no, I, I like yeah, it's like not it's it's not kosher. I'm like, <laughs> like there's nope. there's some, ooh man, and then I'm like there's some Jews that celebrate Christmas. Why I'm like, not, man? do you do you see exactly? But I'm like, do you see what's wrong here? Because they like capitalism, like you said. Yeah, that's yeah, a good they got to prove everybody it works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it works, bro. <laughs> it works. Now buy our shit. What's the meme where it's like, when you do it right and you don't fuck up, it works. <laughs> it just works. I have no idea. Like, what is that from? That wasn't like some meme. Or, or is that like Adam Sandler or something? It, it could be. I have no fucking idea. Out of ah, he's, he's Jewish. He is. He's very Jewish. Yeah. Our hair is like the same thing. <laughs> Except you got the Edgar cut now. Oh yeah, now I got the Chicano cut. <laughs> now I got the Link Empire, man. Link Empire, man. This is what I listen to. <laughs> I listen to Fight Time, man. Oh shit. But oh. I like I I like the Metallica better. <laughs> yeah. Shit, man. I think this is a good spot to end it. Yeah, this is. Um, this was fun. Yeah. Um. I'll let you know what the podcast recommendations gonna be. Are are you gonna want to do another movie or music? Uh, whatever strikes you, I don't care. And okay. I'm into the yeah, obscurity. Cause... All right, yeah, because I'm thinking about showing you another movie that's in like the Spanish category. Okay. Yeah, because I just I I know I want Friday, 
on my show, but I'm like, you know what? I love all these movies. Like, I don't really hear people talking about them, obviously, in like in an English speaking YouTube world. So I'm like, I want to bring these. I mean, I know people have talked about them, but I'm like, yeah. Oh man, these are such good movies. Yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. All right, make it cool. happen. I'll, I'll let you know. And all. All right, turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> and send and send off a low. Yep. All right. Buenas noches. Jason. Jason. Jason.